In 1945, millions of young servicemen were returning home from World War II. On December 5th of that year, a group of dedicated hockey men got together in Windsor, Ontario, and in a meeting that lasted three hours at the Norton Palmer Hotel, the International Hockey League was born. The inaugural season saw four teams play 15 games, with two teams based in Detroit and two in Windsor. The very first Turner Cup, the IHL's championship trophy presented annually to the playoff champion, went to the Detroit Auto Club team. The 1940s saw the league's popularity continue to grow, though each season saw movement in teams, with a high of 11 in 1948 and a drop-off to just five in 1949. The 50s ushered in a sense of stability. The Fort Wayne Comets joined the league in 1952 and remain today as the league's oldest and steadiest club. That same year saw the demise of the IHL's last Canadian team, the Chatham Maroons, making the IHL all-American-based. The Cincinnati Mohawks joined the IHL in 1952 and went on to win a record five consecutive Turner Cups from 53 to 57. Len Thornson, the all-time leading IHL scorer, began his career in 1956 with the Indianapolis Chiefs. In 13 stellar seasons, Thornson scored 479 goals and 898 assists. The league remained relatively stable through the 60s and 70s, and in 1980, the IHL expanded to its current schedule of 82 games per team. The unique tiebreaker shootout format to decide games tied at the end of overtime was adopted in 1986. This has added even more excitement to the game as there are no ties in IHL games. The 1990s has brought continued growth, stability, and excitement. With the addition of the Atlanta Knights, the Cincinnati Cyclones, and the Cleveland Lumberjacks to the league this year, the IHL is firmly positioned in major markets from Atlanta to San Diego. Last year's attendance was over 2.5 million and looks to break the 3 million mark this year. Eight of the 12 teams are the top affiliates of NHL clubs. And the IHL has truly become an international league. With the demise of the Soviet Union, there has been a flood of Russian and European players into the league. Last year, the San Diego Gulls acquired winger Dmitry Kvartlinov, and he promptly won the IHL's MVP and Rookie of the Year awards, having scored 60 goals and 118 points. He was the top draft choice of the Boston Bruins and is now one of their leading scorers. And just to drop a couple of other names, U.S. Olympic goaltender Ray LeBlanc and the unified team's gold medal-winning goaltender Mikhail Stalenkov are two more headliners on IHL rosters. The International Hockey League has come a long way from its beginnings in 1945. The IHL is one of the premier professional hockey leagues and has a bright future ahead. Looking live at downtown Atlanta and a city that's on fire with sports activity hosting World Series participants two years in a row the 1996 Olympics and now the Omni celebrating its 20th anniversary has hockey back in this building as tonight the International Hockey League's television season debuts on prime as the Salt Lake Golden Eagles take on the Atlanta Knights Hi, everybody. With Mike Barrett, this is Ken Double, and welcome to our first broadcast of the year. It seems like yesterday we were here for the All-Star Game in the Omni last year, but now we're here for regular season action and anticipating an outstanding hockey game tonight with two of the IHL's best teams. Mike, the Atlanta Knights have been playing very well and have led the Eastern Conference all year. Salt Lake's been hot lately. Well, the Golden Eagles have won nine of their last 12. The Knights have won nine of 13. Both teams playing very well in their respective divisions. And as a result, I would assume we'll have another very competitive match between the two hockey teams. The Atlanta Knights, one of the best in the East, and the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, one of the best in the West. And we'll be talking about the standings, the hot teams in the league, the hot players in the league as we go along. But we're getting set for a big night of hockey action in the Omni. We're glad you're with us on Prime Network tonight. The IHL on the Prime Network is brought to you by RCA Consumer Products, changing entertainment again. By Power Play Promotions, the official supplier of IHL products. 
and by American Semwood, the wood fiber cement people. We're coming right back to the Omni with hockey right after these messages. Right. We're coming back on right to the game, right, guys? Also on defense, number 24, John Rivers. No way we'll have time for that preview. Of the the no. ball lady, you never know. Yeah. TV controls everything. <laughs> They'll drop the puck when the producer tells them to drop the puck. <laughs> right? Okay. Never heard of We're back at the Omni and just about ready to drop the puck. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the Atlanta Knights. And before we get started, let's take a look quickly at the standings in the IHL. First of all, in the Eastern Conference, Atlanta has been the best team in the East all season long. Right now with 40 points ahead of Cleveland and Cincinnati. Fort Wayne has really come on and been playing strong hockey of late to get themselves among what we might call the Elite Four. Mike, you've been following the teams very closely out west, and Salt Lake is trying to catch what everybody knows is the best team in the IHL, San Diego. Very competitive in the Pacific Division. Salt Lake four points ahead of the Roadrunners, but everybody knows the goals uh, lost another one last night in overtime and only one regulation loss. And, of course, Milwaukee leading in the Midwest Division of the International League as well in the Western Conference. And Ken, let's go. We're underway in Atlanta. And the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, the visitors in red. Atlanta, the home team, in white. And the puck controlled by the Golden Eagles right now. In goal for Salt Lake, Andre Trefilov, an outstanding Soviet player with a 12-3-1 mark for the Golden Eagles. He's been great all year. David Littman between the pipes for the Atlanta Knights who come to center ice for the puck. Here's Brent Gretzky, Wayne Gretzky's youngest brother. Brent's just 20. He's had a couple of good games in a row. Two goals and two assists in his last two games. Now the puck here to the near side. Atlanta, for most of the year, not a real physical team, but of late have begun to bang the body just a little bit more. Gretzky tips it to center. Kevin Wartman. An outstanding young defenseman for Salt Lake plays it ahead, and that's a two-line pass. And we'll have a face-off. Early on, uh, tight to minute one gone into the opening period. The Eagles are the top farm team of the Calgary Flames of the National Hockey League, and Andre Trefilov is one of their goaltenders of the future with that 2.62 goals against second in the league in that department. The Atlanta Knights are the top farm team of Tampa Bay, and our referee tonight is Derek Martin from Chicago, Illinois, and the linesmen this evening are Patrick Berry and Jay Jacobs. And the faceoff controlled by the Golden Eagles. Rich Chernomaz on the far board, number 16. Chernomaz, a Salt Lake mainstay for many years and a great player in this league for a long time. From center ice, tonight's jump it in. Early going, first period of play in the National Hockey League action. The first of a number of games all year on the Prime Network. Darren Soap plays the puck for the Golden Eagles, another veteran defenseman. Now here's Struce, number 19. Taken away at the line on a good play by LaPuma. Atlanta the other way. Jason Lafreniere, number 10, can't control the puck. Behind the defense, McCarthy. Sandy McCarthy getting hacked by Dan Vincelette. Now to the point, Kevin Guy. Good low shot deflected in front by Stru uh, Brose, that is. And uh, a near miss there for the Golden Eagles. Shane Stevenson, number 19, just back from a broken foot. He missed three weeks with a fractured bone in his foot. This is his third game back. He heads to the bench after a short shift. Turnamaz jumps it in. And the Golden Eagles right now ranked last in the league in goals scored, and so they're going to rely on their goaltending and their defense here tonight. 
offside, whistled at the line. There you see Keith Osborne for the Atlanta Knights. He is the IHL's leading goal scorer and one of the key players in this game tonight. He scored a goal last night. In fact, he's got four goals and four assists in his last four games. Started the season scoring at least a point in each of the first 20 games played by the Atlanta Knights. And uh, originally out of the St. Louis organization, he's in a free agent year. He can sign with anybody after this season and is looking forward to a big year. First round Blues pick in 1987, 12th overall that year. And he also spent parts of two seasons in the IHL with the Peoria Rivermen. Now Kevin Guy behind his own net. Loose puck played by Atlanta. Scott Boston from the point didn't get all of it. Big pump along the near board. Kept in at the point by Rivers. And Trefiloff is out. Spins it to the far side. Played at the far point. There's a shot deflected in front and off Trefiloff's stick. Did a good job to follow that one all the way through. And we're coming back on the IHL on Prime after these messages. With Mike Barrett, Ken Double, we're back at the Omni. The Golden Eagles have been on the road for a while. Ken, that started last Saturday night in Cincinnati. They played in Fort Wayne, spent the week in Fort Wayne, played uh, Friday night in Cincinnati, Saturday afternoon here, and now here tonight against the Knights once more. Now off the faceoff, Scott Boston fires one, another save by Trefiloff. At center ice, the Knights deflected in. Trefiloff way out of the net, pops it along the boards. Atlanta right in front. Stan Drulia has he been a fine since he came down from Tampa Bay. Played very well. Couldn't complete the play there. Salt Lake the other way. Jumped in by Struth and then it's called offside at the line. Golden Eagles have uh, the most power of play opportunities against. A very physical team traditionally is uh, We'll see uh, how the Golden Eagles play it along the boards. Uh, Gene Ubriaco wasn't too happy about the physical play in the game on Saturday. The Eagles traditionally a very physical team. The Knights not as strong, but very skillful up front. It was a 6-3 score in this building yesterday afternoon. Atlanta defeated Salt Lake. Salt Lake defeated Atlanta twice earlier in the season right after Thanksgiving. And a period of time when uh, Gene Ubriaco, as we have an icing call here, Dean Ubriaco was just not at all happy with the way the uh, Atlanta Knights were playing at that point in time. And that started Salt Lake on a heck of a run, Mike. It sure did. And uh, the Golden Eagles have won 9 of 12, as we talked about at the outset. And one of their more physical players is Alex Nikoluk, a rookie out of Cornell University. And, uh, of course, one of the greats of all time uh, from that school, legendary Hall of Famer Ken Dryden. No score. Three and a half minutes into the game. Ken Hodge, just down from Tampa Bay. Two years ago, was a 30-goal scorer for Boston. Oh, Gretzky just missed the backhander in front. And a whistle and a penalty coming up. Holding is the call. The Atlanta Knights are going on the power play. Moment ago, what a great play for Gretzky as he just missed cutting in front and heading to the penalty box, Kevin Wartman. He's a whole defenseman holding oh, yeah. the call. Last year, Workman was the American-born Rookie of the Year and the, the fourth of four consecutive Salt Lake players, including Paul Ramheim, and Tim Sweeney, and C.J. Young, who have won that award. But right now, he picks up the minor penalty, and the Knights go on the power play. Gene Ubriaco, 54 years of age, former Pittsburgh Penguin coach, wants to get his power play unit going. Atlanta on the power play. 
hitting it at 22%, third in the league. Capuano has a roll off his stick, and it's cleared all the way down by the Golden Eagles. The Knights in the power play uh, rank at fifth in the league, 35 for 155, just over 22% with the man advantage, and the Golden Eagles rank fifth also in penalty killing. Now Capuano jumps it in. Guy gets there first, but fans on his clearing attempt, but is able to get the puck up to Forsland. He sends it all the way down. Littman plays it ahead quickly to try and beat Salt Lake on the player chain. Number seven is Ken Hodge. Played two games as a goal and four assists. Now across the line, Capuano, number 11. And the zone is cleared. Salt Lake doing a good job, what we call standing him up at the blue line. Don't let the team come across the line offensively with any kind of thrust or any kind of a set pattern. The Eagles are used to penalty killing. They have given up more power of play opportunities, 190 coming into the game. So they're well versed in the penalty killing department. Now the Knights have changed their power play unit and across the line. They roll it in front for Lafreniere. Knocks down the high pass to the deep slot and Hodge. With Boston at the other point. Now here's Gretzky to Boston. He tees it up. And a glove save by Krepilov. And you get just an inkling of the acrobatic manner in which this young Soviet plays the net. He is really fun to watch. Well, we saw that glove save, and, you know, Glenn Hall, the Hall of Fame goaltender, uh, played with the St. Louis Blues and the Chicago Blackhawks. He says that Trefilov has the quickest glove he's ever seen, and that includes guys like Sawchuk and Quant and Ken Dryden. He says that uh, Trefilov in that department is the quickest he's ever seen. Funny Air, Gretzky, and Stevenson, the forward line for the remainder of the power play. 25 seconds left for the Knights. Now Boston to the far side. Now here's Rivers. Gretzky looking for the opening. From the slot, the shot fired. Another good save. Rivers gets it back. Throws another one on that. The rebound loose in front. Still loose. Trefilov went down and made the save. Penalty just about over. The front of the air fires one knocked down by the defense and picked up. Here comes Salt Lake. Across the line, Little Hafey had a hat trick last night. Whistles one just wide of the near post. Now uh, the Knights break out of their zone. Gary Miller, Boston. Boston rolls into the far corner, heads to the bench. And the puck played in the neutral zone. We've played just over six minutes in the first period. No score in the hockey game. Here's an interception by Kevin Guy. And the big guy carries in. Rivers knocks it off his stick. But throws right in front. Near miss there. Cleared on a good play by Buchanan. All the way down. This will be an icing call against Atlanta. No score. 13-34 left in the first period. And we're coming back to the Omni for more IHL action on the Prime Network after this timeout. Okay, good. I want to see. I want to see who took the shot. Rivers. Okay. You want I'll come back and then you go. Okay. Back at the Omni and a near miss on the power play for the Knights. John Rivers took the shot. Trefloff made a stick save, and the rebound came out to Lafreniere, and uh, Trefloff got a piece of that also. So uh, good uh, pair of scoring chances for the night. Now we're ready to resume. Ken Hodge, number seven, to take the face off against David St. Pierre. Has not seen a lot of action for Salt Lake. He's in the lineup tonight for their coach, Bob Francis. He wears number 17. He scored his first professional goal last Sunday in Fort Wayne and then capped it off with the game winner in the shootout. Lipman can't play the puck behind the net. Forsland 
for the bouncing puck. Leaves it in the corner. St. Pierre's centering pass. Knocked wide. And Timmy Berglund sends it ahead. A three-sport star at the University of Minnesota. Berglund, one heck of an athlete. Where's number 29 for the Atlanta Knights? There's Bob Francis. Bob Francis, 34 years of age. The son of Emil Francis, the cap. Of course, uh, he was coach, general manager of the New York Rangers for a long time. The St. Louis Blues and now with the Hartford Whalers. And Bob also played in the International Hockey League with the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Was their captain in 1986-87 as the team captured the first of two straight Turner Cups. Bob looks like maybe the road's getting to him. He didn't look too happy during that little exchange with one of his players. He's a fiery guy, just like his dad, and I'll tell you what, one of the more competitive guys you'll find in this league. Nice breakout pass, and Scrooge carrying in. Littman keeps the puck away from him, and now a high floating clearing play. Lafreniere is trying to steal it. Now as the Knights push it back in, they'll have to clear the zone. Otherwise, it'd be an offside call. Again, so far, very little hitting in the game. It's been a pretty much blue line to blue line game in the early going. Now at the near point, La Puma. The youngster fires, good block by Clark. And now Salt Lake had a three-on-one brewing and couldn't make the connection on the pass. Tough break there. Now the Golden Eagles give it up to Vince Gillette and behind the play, a couple of players are heading to the penalty boxes here. Well, the Puma and Gillingham colliding to the left of the Atlanta goal. Vince Ouellette was down there, too. And it was Gillingham going into the corner to the left of the net. And, boy, you can see the big collision with the Puma. The Puma was tossed onto the game on Saturday for an instigation in a fight. And in this particular instance, Gillingham picks up the penalty. And so does the Puma matching minors. The two penalty minute leaders for these teams, the Puma, 138 minutes in penalties. Gillingham just shy of 100. And now it'll be four on four in front of the goaltenders. This is one of the new rules back in hockey. For many years, uh, it was kind of the Wayne Gretzky rule. In coincidental minors, and they would replace the players and skate five on five. But now it's four on four in front of the goalies to open up the rink. And this is very uh, interesting hockey now. Gillingham and Lapuma two each for roughing at 7.51. Now Rivers gives it to Lands, a 10-year NHL veteran with Lands. One of the main liners on the back line for Gene Ubriaco, who's got five rookies dressed for defense. Now Stan Brunia, his shot, got a little too much of it. And Salt Lake clears the zone. Here's Wartman. What a great year he had last year. Great rush up the rink. It's loose in front. The rebound smothered by Littman. Right in front. Tim Harris did everything but score. And now a melee in front of the Atlanta net. Well, Kevin Werdman took the original rush, and the stop was made. The puck was loose in front, and Harris came barreling in there. And then pushing and shoving develops as uh, Patrick Berry separates Harris from a couple of Atlanta players to the up to the goal. So the best scoring chance really for Salt Lake in this game. A couple of uh, scoring pops earlier, and it was Werdman who made the original play to the right of the net, worked in, the puck bouncing around in front, then Harris took the shot, Littman with a, a scoop uh, with that glove hand to make the stop. And then coming to the defense of their goaltender, that's Sean Rivers, number 24 for Atlanta, and he's a little guy. Rivers, 5'10", 185, dripping wet. Uh, but he's feisty. Litt Littman got a shot in there also, and he uh, uh, was able to get a little bit of a glove hand in there. 11.24 left to go first period. No score in the hockey game. We're at the Omni. IHL Hockey on the Prime Network. Our premier telecast this year. We're four on four in front of the goalies for the next minute as Rivers carries in for Atlanta. Rivers leaves it in front, taken away by Thomas Forslund. Here comes Forslund, number 41. Leaves it for Melrose. A big shot and a big save by Littman. Littman, uh, an 11th round Sabres pick in 87. A good glove save on the play down into the Atlanta zone. 11 minutes left in this first period. No score in the hockey game. Both teams have had a couple of opportunities. Littman, who was called up early, he had a great start for Atlanta, was called up by Tampa Bay, and then sat for about seven games there before coming back down here. And then with that long layoff, he was a little rusty. 
But well, he's come back real strong since J.C. Bergeron now has been called up by Tampa Bay. Great season last year, 29 victories in the American League, was the best goaltender in that uh, league last season. Now here's Hodge. A little room at center ice. Hodge playing his third game for Atlanta. Blisters are shot the rebound! Oh, Boston was there for it and couldn't get a stick on the puck. Well, Andre Trefloff again with the reflexes in front of the Salt Lake goal and uh, was able to pounce on top of the loose puck. He ranked second in the league in goals against the only goaltender with a better average, Rick Kanickel, the San Diego goals. And again, the uh, Knights worked in. It was Hodge and across the line, worked against Stolk and then took the shot. Trefloff makes the save. The rebound comes out and he makes the second save also on the player cutting in Scott Boston and another couple of sequences of saves for this Salt Lake goaltender. Now the Knights win the draw. 30 seconds still to run on the coincidental minor penalty. We're still four on four on the right. Hodge battling Stoke. A couple of veteran players there. Hodge comes away with it. Stoke runs him into the boards. Hodge kicks it cleverly to Osborne. Couldn't get around Wartman. Wartman, an outstanding defenseman. Wartman, uh, last year, as mentioned, had a tremendous offensive season and actually played at the All-Star game right in this building here at the Omni last year. And, of course, the penalty now is expired, and the teams are at even strength right now. Five on five. Ooh. Salt Lake dumps it in. The Knights played it on the far side. Kept in front for Forslund. Now there's one right in front of near miss there for Clark. Forslund keeps it alive. But then the Knights clear the zone. Gary Clark having a scoring chance. He's the younger brother of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Wendell Clark. Rick lands with a puck at his own line. Feeds it ahead for Vincelet. And now LaPuma. Vincelet just traded by Tampa Bay to Philadelphia for Steve Casper. And uh, the Philadelphia organization has said, Vinny, you stay down here with uh, Atlanta and we'll figure out what to do with you later. Their farm club, Hershey, has a whole bunch of people. We've got another penalty as players push and shove behind the net. It all started with Clark and the Pumas. The puck was coming up the left wing side of the Atlanta zone, and all of a sudden, back of the play, we uh, had the two combatants into the Atlanta zone. We'll announce the penalties when we come back. No score at the Omni on the Prime Network's telecast of IHL hockey. Back in a minute. Who have they got? Hafey, McCarthy, and who's the other? Uh, Cherno, Cherno, and okay. then Wortman and Forslin on the okay. point. Back at the Omni, Chris LaPuma for the Atlanta Knights. The two minutes. Yeah, he draped down Kerry Clark as Clark was barreling into the Atlanta zone. And uh, picked up a holding penalty at 10.43. And as a result, Salt Lake will go on the power play. And they're last in the league in that department with only 20 power play goals. And the Knights have a pretty decent penalty killing. They're only uh, fourth in the league in that department. Although Salt Lake, despite their troubles on the power play, got three yesterday here at the Omni in four attempts. And all three by Sean Hafey. So... That made it even more interesting because of the woes that they've had with the man advantage this year. Now the Knights stand truly at doing a good job to lag a little time on this penalty. 8.45 to go in the first period. A minute 25 left on the Salt Lake power play. The first power play of the hockey game. Now McCarthy behind the net. He's Turnamaz. He can't control the puck. And Capuano's got a little room. Feeds it all the way down. 
Good play by Capuano. He saw the opening. Rather than make a pass, he just flipped it all the way down. Eats up the clock, and now the Knights change up defensively. And again, penalty killing. The Knights, 81% of the time they've been shorthanded, they've been able to save off the opposition. Now Scrooge feeds it around to the far side, and the puck is cleared to center right. So far, Salt Lake struggling a little bit, trying to get themselves set on the power play, which has 44 seconds to run. Atlanta doing a nice job of keeping Salt Lake bottled in their own end. Now they have Hodge up front with Berglund, the two veterans up front to give it off. David St. Pierre rolls it in across the line, but it's taken away by Rivers. He sends it all the way down. There's a long pass ahead for Gillingham. Big guy dumps it in. Clark trying to make the play. Kept alive by Guy. Kevin Guy has the puck taken away, but not cleared by Boston. Ten seconds left on the power play. Battle for the puck in the corner. Gillingham centering pass taken by Lafreniere. And Lapuma is out of the penalty box. Here's a two on two. Long shot by Vincelet. Had saved by Trefalon. No real good scoring chances for Salt Lake with the man advantage. The Knights did a terrific job in the penalty kill. Lafreniere with an open net. Couldn't find pay dirt. Trefalon went down early, but Lafreniere couldn't get it home. There's another shot knocked down by the defense. Now Atlanta buzzing the net. Penalty coming up on the Golden Eagles, and there's the whistle. Well, uh, both uh, Kevin Guy and Darren Stoke were holding up Atlanta players back of the net. Shane Stevenson was causing some havoc to the left of the goal. Also in front was Vince Eleven. It appears that Clark is going to get called for the minor to the right of the Salt Lake goal. And it was right in front when the Atlanta team, Julia, had a good scoring chance for actually Lafreniere. And then Trevelop was able to make the stop. And then uh, the clerk came over to the side and picked up the minor penalty on that play. Boy, a near miss opportunity. Vince Select gets the shot away. And as usual, Trefalov can't just stop the puck. He does the split. He goes down, throws his legs in every direction. Very acrobatic between the pipes. Unorthodox, to say the least. But as they say, we don't care if you stand on your head as long as you stop the puck, right? No question about that. And he's done that quite a bit with over a 90% save percentage this year. Clark the roughing penalty at 13-14. Atlanta on their second power play. They're 0 for 1 so far in this game. Now Osborne, the IHL's leading goal scorer, can't control it across the line. Lands will reload the gun for the Atlanta Knights. Atlanta looking for their 20th win of the year. Again, the Knights have been great on home ice. 10, 2, and 1 this season at the Omni in their first year back in the International Hockey League, the first year ever in this league. Hockey back in this building, and the fans responding pretty well. Attendance growing steadily here. I'll tell you what, they love their hockey in Cincinnati and Milwaukee. Drawing getting close to 10,000 a game in those buildings. Now, oh, a near miss there. Osborne slid the puck around and Drulia almost got it behind the goaltender. And we have another penalty coming up. It may be Paul Holden for Salt Lake. I'm not sure back of the goal as the Knights were again pressing into the Salt Lake territory. It is a holding call as uh, Atlanta again buzzing. And if that's the case, we'll have a two-man power Ball play coming up. Atlanta will have a two-man advantage for the next 59 seconds. Holding indeed is the call. Yeah, but it's actually against Trefalov as the play was back of the goal. He's been called for holding and delay of the game this season. And the rules in Europe are quite a bit different. And Trefalov has had a habit of coming out, and he came out of his goal crease area and held the player really in front of the net. And he gets called, and it wasn't holding, although he leveled really after the play. Serving the penalty will be Harris. Check that. Yeah, it'll be Tim Harris. Yep. Yeah, Trefalov also has been called a couple of times for delay of the game for freezing the puck outside the crease. And in the International League, uh, you're not allowed to do that in pro hockey over here. Over in Europe, you're allowed to hold the puck outside that goal crease. He's been called for that a few times as well. Now the Knights 
roll it right in front. Atlanta trying to jam it home. The front of the air couldn't get the job done. A two-man advantage for the next 40 seconds. 20 is Stan Drulia. 10 is Jason Lafreniere back to Drulia. To the deep slot. Hodge, a one-timer save. The rebound popped up in the air. Loose in the slot. Lafreniere trying to jam it home. Finally, it's underneath the goaltender. Trafalov able to make the save with his team two men down. The Atlanta Knights two-man power play will continue after we take time out on the IHL on Prime. Every Monday night from 7 or 8 o'clock on AM 680 WCNN, Coach Yuri Arco will talk hockey, visit with guests, and take your calls on night talk. Also, fans, great seats are still available for upcoming night games, and if you need more information, stop by the night service booth at level 45 or visit the Omni Future event window located at Portal 2. And finally, fans, the Atlanta Knights are sponsored by the Greater Atlanta McDonald's oh, Restaurant to remind you what you want is what you get at McDonald's today. got the boomer away from the deep slot but treffle off up to the tag another great save the shots on goal 14 to 3 already in favor of atlanta and treffle off stopped them all and now has to face the two-man power play for 20 seconds with treffle off on that holding call now rick lands on the far side fires it high off the glass hodge keeps it in lafreniere looking for the pass Clark is back on. It's now just a one-man power play, but still another 57 seconds to work for Atlanta. Julia lands. He had a lane to the net. Fired, but Kruffeloff made the save. Back to land. Now the front of the air. Trying to break the score of Sky Atlanta on their second power play of the hockey game. Great puck possession for Atlanta on this power play, but not too many opportunities, although the puck possession is terrific. This is what they do. There's a good pad save on a shot by Trulia. They don't, they don't take a lot of shots. They try and make the perfect pass. Trefilov, very active, out to clear that centering pass. The Lance has had the most chances. Hodge just missed the far post. And the Knights. Reload at center ice with just five seconds left. So the Salt Lake Golden Eagles got the job done and kill off the two-man disadvantage. The penalty box oh, is empty. We're back at five on five in front of the goaltender. As mentioned, Ken, uh, Ken uh, Salt Lake, uh, a lot of experience this season in the penalty kill department. By far, a differential of 48 more power play opportunities for the opposition than they've had offensively. And as a result, they've gotten pretty skilled at killing off penalties. Their goaltending has been pretty strong as well. Now Rivers throws a long one on net, and Trefiloff sends it all the way down. This will be an icing call. Maybe he thought they were still short-handed. Now we've got three minutes and 12 seconds left in this first period, and we're coming back to the Omni for more of this game featuring the Atlanta Knights and the Salt Lake Golden Eagles on Prime.
There you see the league leaders in the IHL. Hubie McDonough from San Diego with his 50 points. Keith Osborne of Atlanta is second with the most goals in the IHL at 21. Osborne, uh, as you mentioned, uh, scored a goal yesterday and has been off by, on fire all season long. And uh, acquired by the Tampa Bay Lightning in the expansion draft this past summer. And now the puck played all the way down. We're going to have another icing call. 3.04 left to go in the first period. No score in the hockey game between Bob Francis' Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the Atlanta Knights coached by Gene Ubriaco, who has been around. Ubi has been around forever. He sure has, and in fact, uh, actually played a game in the old Western Hockey League when he was 19 years of age against Bob Francis' father, Abel the Cat, who was a goaltender in uh, Spokane, and Gene Ubriaco... 54 years of age and has uh, coached a myriad of different teams in the Central League and the Eastern League and also the IHL started with the Milwaukee Admirals. He was the first coach of the Milwaukee Admirals in this league back in the 70s. Last year, two years, coached the uh, Italian national team, coached for the Olympics, Capuano, number 11, on a great rush up the rink and a near-miss opportunity. Salt Lake clears the puck. Osborne's deflection of center played into the Atlanta zone. Melrose dumps it in behind the net. John Rivers with Salt Lake four checkers. And they get the puck. Paul Holden of center ice flips a high one in. Rivers has a player on side and a bouncing puck. Timmy Berglund couldn't connect. Takes a big bump from Holden. Scramble along the far boards. And it's kicked to center ice by the Golden Eagles. It's sent right back in by Atlanta. Inside two minutes left here in the first period. Team's getting more physical on the boards. The first ten minutes or so, very light. It's now picking up as far as the physical play is concerned. And so often, not that it's got to become dirty physical play, just, just more physical. Get a body on a player, and that can ignite a team so well. Now high. Very, fairly clean, except right there, a holding call, I believe, in front. It may have been Kevin Guy holding the player in front of the net, Vince Solette. We'll see if that's the call. There were some other players involved, and Paul Holden skates to the penalty box also. So it looks like he'll be the guilty eagle, and Atlanta will have another power play, their fourth opportunity here in the first period. And it was uh, Holden just hauling down Hodge as he worked right into the Salt Lake zone. Good move by Hodge, and Holden didn't have much of uh, a choice in the matter with Hodge headed toward the net. Yeah, it was a good scoring opportunity for Atlanta. And a nice uh, with the advantage on the man power play here in the first period have had the bulk of the puck possession into the Salt Lake zone. Now Stevenson, 19 on the left wing, Lafreniere at center, and now Jean Bluin, number 23 on the ice for the Knights on this power play. Lafreniere to Stevenson. To the deep slot, high. He can fire the puck. Now Lamb. Ooh, that one almost got through. It goes to the far side. Wartman's going to get there first, but he can't clear the zone. The goaltender does. Good play by Trefiloff as Lambs couldn't keep the bouncing puck in at the blue line. Twice he's played the puck outside the line, once for the ice. Oh, man, this time in a penalty kill situation, Trefiloff himself able to clear the zone. Now it's center right. Good play by... Oh, yep, Tyler. Clear the puck. And now here's Hodge with a rush up the wing. Drop pass to front of yeah, Knocked down by the defense. It never got to the goaltender. Near miss for the Atlanta Knights. And a great play by the Salt Lake defense. A great rush up the rink by Atlanta. And the Eagles are able to clear the zone once more. It's now Churnamans and Struce up front to kick it off. 45 seconds on the Atlanta power play. John Bluin. We have just 10 seconds left in the period. And with the puck clear to center, this power play will carry over to the next period. The Knights jump it all the way in. And there's the horn. So the first period is over. It's scoreless after the first 20 minutes. When the second period commences, Atlanta will have 26 seconds on a power play to start that second period. 
An interesting, well-played first period of hockey. And during our intermission, all kinds of interesting things for you, including a chat with a commissioner, Tom Barry of the International Hockey League. Interesting features to pass along as well, including a look at Manon Rayom. And we'll have all that for you and more as our telecast from the Omni continues. We'll be back with our first intermission after we take this time out. You're watching IHL Hockey on Prime. After the first 20 minutes of hockey, no score at the Omni. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the Atlanta Knights. Some great opportunities at both ends of the rink, particularly for Atlanta in this first period, but we're scoreless after one. Hello again, everybody. This is Ken Double. And joining me during this first intermission, the commissioner of the IHL, Tom Barry. And Tom, I know there are so many things that you're thrilled about as far as this International Hockey League is concerned, not the least of which is national television exposure with Prime. Well, it's great to be here in Atlanta and have this production going on. The Prime people are doing a wonderful job, and we're really thrilled that they're able to pick it up and carry it across the country because our brand of hockey is indeed superb, and we're delighted that this opportunity is here. And it's only the first of many, so we're looking forward to many more like this. Indeed. And for you fans who may not be real familiar with IHL hockey, this is a league that's been around for a long time, some 40 years plus. But it's had, as a league, its ups and downs, and certainly on an upswing lately, Tom, from a league of players on their way down to a lot of unnecessary physical type of play, goon hockey, if you will, to now major affiliations with NHL teams and great young talent on its way up. Well, we're very fortunate. The league is entering its 48th year this year, and, you know, for about 40 years, it pondered along as a pretty good uh, amateur league for the players to play out their careers. But in the last seven or eight years, thanks to the good work of Bud Poyle, our previous commissioner, and others of his ilk along the way have all made it possible that we have such a great effort today by the young players and the teams that are affiliated with our clubs and it all is breaking into one heck of a great hockey club so uh, league so we're very pleased that these things have happened outside of teams like Fort Wayne that's been around since 1952 and Kalamazoo and Peoria some teams in some of the smaller cities the other thing that's been spectacular is the growth into major markets for this uh, league. Well, we've been very fortunate. We have a good group of owners that have brought in the expertise that they have in marketing in many areas and brought it forth so that the game of hockey could become a reality in a lot of the major cities. And fortunately for them and for us and for everybody, the spectators have taken well to the game. So we've got a tremendous effort of people who enjoy 
enjoy the game of hockey being brought to major league cities. They no longer have to watch it only on TV, when and if it ever was there. So we're very thrilled with this part of our effort, too. Well, the expansion, too, into Cincinnati and Atlanta and Cleveland. In the last couple of years, the growth into Kansas City and Southern California bodes well what's on the horizon. I know always the applications come to your desk. Well, that they do, and we're certainly uh, hoping that certainly what happened here in the National League this last week in Anaheim and Miami, Florida is going to mean two more teams for our league, and we're anxious to have some more. We have a couple right now that we're sorting through applications, that is, for a few other cities besides the ones that we may get and uh, are hopeful in the NHL's new, new affiliation, and I think pretty sure we'll have a couple of great ones out west here for the new year so the new season we're really uh, comfortable with the way things are going and we're sort of reassessing what our future will be as a league but I think that you're going to see a few more cities coming on in here in the next year congratulations on the great growth of this league during your watch and continued success to you Tom well thank you very much Ken great to be here today Tom Barry, the commissioner and president of the IHL and we'll be back to the Omni after we take this time out no score on prime Oh, yeah, okay, I got you. Hello. Okay. There we right. Okay. All righty. And then, will we be on camera anymore? Doing, doing the stats thing at the end? Okay, okay, I'll stay here then. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. Good job. No score after the first period of play in our game at the Omni, the Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the Atlanta Knights. One of the most intriguing stories in the IHL all season long, the road to hockey stardom for Mano Rayom, the female goaltender. I start to play like at five years old. I start to skate at three. My parents... Uh, Make the outside eyes. That's why I started to skate very young. And my two brothers play hockey. And uh, when I would like to play with him, they said, "Go in the net, and we're gonna set on you." And if I start like this. First of all, for me, it's not important to be the first woman. Uh, the fact is, I'm the first woman, and if they can help other women, I think it's good. And because when I was young, I never seen women uh, at this level, and it's why I never think uh, to go higher. And uh, sometimes when I have some problem because I'm a girl, so I was discouraged, and uh, uh, sometimes I think to stop. And it's why now, if they can help other women to continue to play, or if they can help other men too, it's. Uh, some um, boy said, if a girl can do this, I can do this. I think it's good too.
practice every day with uh, the guys and uh, after uh, every day I have uh, outside training and uh, I do some uh, weights and uh, aerobic thing and flexibility too. And so I, I work hard every day and to try to catch up and uh, to be stronger on the ice. So when I was young, uh, one of my favorite goaltenders uh, was Daniel Boussa. And he played for uh, Quebec Nordics, and now I have the chance to meet him because he lives in Atlanta. And it's good to uh, meet him. I think I have a lot of pressure for this game. I don't have to put more in my uh, shoulder when I said it's an NHL game. I just think uh, to do my best and to concentrate on the game. And uh, I was very nervous uh, before the game, but when uh, I go on the ice, uh, I feel good. No, I never think uh, to be here uh, before. I never see a woman in uh, professional hockey. It's why uh, every year I want to play because I love uh, that. And uh, but I love the competition. It's why I want to go higher every year. Mano Rayom, certainly easy on the eyes and uh, a great work ethic. It's incredible the great courage that she shows. You know, the book on her at five foot six is going to be shoot high. And at practice, the guys are banging it off the face mask and the helmet. And she just sits there and takes it. And it's one of the reasons she's won over her teammates. But well, Jean Ubriaco mentioned to me that uh, she actually was on her knees taking shots so she could improve her glove. And there was discussion that perhaps she might even see some action before this game concludes. I think a lot will depend on what happens with the scoreboard, but we'll see about that. And when we come back, we'll have the statistics, highlights, and more from our initial game on the Prime Network. No score in Atlanta. Hello. I'm here. <coughs> Can you hear me coughing? I'm here. <laughs> okay. That was good, though, when you, you know, I, I, that's fine with me. Okay. Just, just give me that. And, uh, no problem. <clears throat> Our next telecast on the Prime Network will be Friday night, December the 19th, Cleveland at Cincinnati, available on most of the Prime affiliates around the country. We're looking forward to that one. And we're looking forward to second period action here. Although I'll guarantee you the Golden Eagles, maybe not for this fan, who's obviously an Atlanta fan, the Golden Eagles want to see a little less of this and more offense for their side. 17 to three shots on goal led by Atlanta. Ken Hodge is shot and uh, Truffleoff got a piece. The rebound with LaFreniere in front. He stops that one too and then covers up. And the ninth out shot, Salt Lake, as you talked about, 17 to three in the opening period. And again, uh, the Knights work right in on goal later in the period. 
on this play. Good play by Lafreniere. Better play by the defense to keep that from getting on net. Then Stevenson gets it to the point. And a good shot there, and Trefiloff, as always, very active in front. Then later in the period, a good chance for the point by Rivers. The puck came out in front. There were a lot of rebounds in that opening stanza. And then a, get, a backhand by Lafreniere, and he stops that too. So three times in the first period, Jason Lafreniere has had rebound opportunities for the Atlanta Knights. But when you have 17 shots, you're going to have a few rebounds. We're coming back for second period action after this timeout. Uh, the IHL on Prime. Okay, no problem. Great. Rayom is in. Wow. <laughs> he did it. Ooh. Now, why would you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Hafey's laughing. Hafey's <laughs> smiling. There you see Manon Rayom. And how more timely can it be? We just finished the feature piece on Manol Rayom. She will start the second period for Jean Ubriaco and the Atlanta Knights, making her first appearance of the regular season. Manol Rayom is between the pipes and getting the encouragement and congratulations from her teammates when she stepped in to scrape up the crease in front of the net. A standing ovation from the crowd here at the Omni. And I'll tell you what, it's exciting for all of uh, the sports fans throughout this country. She has to be one nervous individual right now. She played that one NHL exhibition game, but this is a regular season international game, and we'll see how she does here in the second period. Many of the Eagle players were aware that she might play, so uh, we'll see how the Knights play in front of her. We'll see if Salt Lake could change anything offensively to try and pepper her here in the second period, and they're giving her a standing ovation Chaplin goal in the first 17 to 3 in favor of the Atlanta Knights. The truffle off was brilliant, but right now, all that overshadowed by Manon Rayon. It's amazing. She won't be 21 until February 24th. Five foot six, 135 pounds. Was 3-0-0 for the Canadian national women's team last year, posting a goals against average of 0.67, and was impressive enough to fill in Tony Esposito the Tampa Bay and Atlanta organizations to win a tryout. She stops the first shot, the rebound. Cleared by the defense. It'll go down as trivia. Sean Hafey, the first professional shooter on Manon Rayom, and she stops him cold. She had has one goal goals last year, year taking the league, and she made a pretty good save. And as we indicated during the intermission, the book on Manon will be fire and high, and I'll guarantee you she'll be tested high early on. Top shelf will be the place to shoot right now. The puck into the Salt Lake zone, Atlanta. Here's it for the point, and it's dumped back in. The Knights will have to clear the zone. Here's Kevin Guy for the Golden Eagle. Going hand can't catch up with the puck, and the Knights are headed the other way. Caught him in the chain. Stevenson, a shot and a save, and that rebound is cleared to center. And a chase for the puck here. Buchanan with Gillingham. Buchanan runs him off the play. And Manol Rayom steers it to the far side. Shot and a goal. No goal. 
that Kevin Werman left the shot. Gillingham, I think, may have had his stick above his shoulders. It was deflected. We'll see if that's the reason. It Derek was a high Martin. shot. Derek Martin is saying no goal. And instead, a penalty coming up for interference. No goal against Gillingham. The Atlanta Knights get a break as Derek Martin calls an interference penalty and waves off the goal, and he called it immediately. There was no hesitation on his part. Here's another look as Wharton fires the biscuit. And it was deflected, but uh, they say Gillingham was in the crease, but he was outside the crease, so I'm not sure if that was uh, a good call or not. Interference, however, so evidently he had enough in front to screen her out of the play to get the call came. I think that's a break for the Atlanta Knights. And now the puck is behind the Salt Lake net. Atlanta again on the power play. The puck along the near boards. Here's Buchanan at the point. Fired it too high. And the book on Trefiloff is fire high too, so the glass may get a workout here in this second period. Jason Lafreniere with a puck. Now Buchanan. Hodge. Faked it, then decided to shoot it. Chernomov's got in front of it, right in front. The goaltender steers it wide, but then Buchanan fires one, kept in now by Hodge. The shot again knocked down by Chernomov. Good play out front by Chernomov, who's able to clear the zone. Now the Eagles have another 59 seconds to kill on the penalty. Just one shot so far, except for the goal that was disallowed on the 20-year-old Manon Rayon. Now the puck carried to center ice. Julia has it knocked off his stick, and Rivers has it. Now the Golden Eagles able to clear. Thirty seconds left on the power play. Right up the far side, and it's cleared again by the Golden Eagle. That went on goal, so she makes the stop on that one, although it was from center ice. Oh, the Knights give it up at center ice, but Julia picks it right back up. There's a break. Julia with Campuano in the far corner and Rivers. Now Julia with just five seconds on the power play. Rivers bangs his shot, knocked down in front. The penalty is over. Gillingham's between the defenders. Cutting in, Leon knocks the puck. Right back to Gillingham. Count the goal. So Gillingham makes amends. He steps out of the penalty box, and Leon could not clear the puck. Gillingham popped it in behind her. It's one to nothing, Salt Lake. Interesting story there is Gillingham played at Three Rivers, the same junior team that Manon Rayon played for last year. Gillingham played there two seasons ago and actually practiced against it. And strangely enough, he scores the first ever professional goal in a regular game against Manon Rayon. And great work by the camera crew to get Gillingham right out of the box. And there you see the puck right back into his uniform and then into the net. And if there's an area that Manol Rayom is working on more than anything else, it is handling the puck. It's the strength factor where she just isn't strong enough. And there it comes into play as she couldn't get the puck past Gillingham. Now, Salt Lake putting on the pressure. Atlanta able to carry to center. Here's Bergman. Here's Bergman across the line. Rolls it into the corner. Truffle off out. Played along the board. Truffle off way out. Bergman has it. Here's a, a Hodge, rather. Boston, his shot deflected wide. LaPuma fans on a play, and it's at center ice. Played by Timmy Bergman. And now we've got whistles, and again, LaPuma getting into it at the far side. Yeah, the Puma and Tim Harris colliding along the far side right in front of the Atlanta players bench. Harris part of an NCAA championship with Lake Superior. And you know, Ken, Bob Francis was very concerned about Benon Rayon playing goal. He felt that the Knights would really tighten up defensively. And that was his big concern coming into the game tonight. Harris and the Puma both sit two minutes for roughing. 418 into the second period. So once again, we'll be four on four in front of the goaltenders, and there's Gene Ubriaco, who made the call. 
Manol Rayom to play the second period of this game. Maybe two periods. We'll have to wait and see. Talked to him before the game. He said it, uh, he felt about this time of the season, he might give her a chance, and he sure has here tonight. Now the Knights carry in. River's shot is wide. Turn him on. Beat Stoltz. Has it knocked off his stick by the front of the air. And Stoltz reloads the gun. Here's Turnamon. He carries in. Gets around Land. Finally pinched off the play. Stevenson runs St. Pierre into the board. And now Land chases down the puck. The veteran carries the puck well. Hits the red line, spins away from a check. Feeds it ahead for Stevenson. Stevenson not showing much of the ill effects off that broken foot. He's got great wheels. Now turn him on. Who's got deflected high? And Rivers has a funny tear him off the glass. Stevenson. Goes to the center. The front of the air is there. Now Rivers has a little room. He booms a shot. Oh, Krepilov had a little trouble with that one. Took it off the blocker. Almost flipped the catching glove over Cross's body to make that save. Now Poison. Pinched off the play by Buchanan. Holden keeps it in. And now Forsland is hurt behind the net. Very slow to get up. I don't think we have a penalty coming up here. I think it was just a good hit. One to nothing. The Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights. 14-11 left in the second period of the Omni, and we're coming back for more of the IHL on Prime. December the 19th at Kalamazoo against the Wings. Airtime on WCNN, 7 o'clock. Buchanan got the stick up a little bit on Forsland. Got away with it. No penalty called. And Mano Rayom is back to the bench. Well, so Gene, Gene... Gene apparently uh, saw enough in almost six minutes of play in the second period. Mixed reaction from the fans as David Littman is back between the pipes for the Atlanta Knights. A bit surprised you can that uh, he lifted her so quickly well actually it surprised me more that he played her in the first place but uh, that's all right Gene's the coach and uh, knows exactly what he's doing and why the most important factor in whether to play or not play Mano was the reaction of the team and in the last couple of weeks the team has really come around uh, and the, the whole experiment has come around because Manoa's gotten more comfortable as a team member. They've gotten more comfortable with her. And uh, that was the uh, that was the whole reason, the whole major factor as to whether or not she'd get any ice time. Now here's Julia chasing down the puck. Ran into the linesman, still making the play. Capilano with one hand on the stick and one fending off the checker almost, able to steer that one toward the net. One to nothing, the Golden Eagles lead. There's a trip at center ice. And there's the whistle. Penalty coming up on Atlanta. They're going to call it a roughing call, not tripping. And so Salt Lake, with a one to nothing lead, will have the power play. Tim Berglund uh, was right out in the neutral zone, hooked him down. As you mentioned, they called a rough, although it could have been called hooking or tripping. Nevertheless, the Salt Lake man advantage comes up. So the Golden Eagles with a one to nothing lead 
will have the power play. And Atlanta, after a stellar first period in which they controlled the play and enjoyed a major power play advantage. As you can see, the penalty minutes favoring Atlanta, two to one. But at this point in time, it's Capuano, the guilty party, and they'll call it slashing. Got the stick up a little bit, at least in the opinion of Derek Martin, the referee. And so Salt Lake is on the power play for the next two minutes. Now Turnamaz feeds Hafey. Hafey had three power play goals last night. Behind the net, McCarthy. Now Hafey. Forsland at the point. Here's Wartman. He quickly fires and a dandy save. And Littman juggled the puck, but Derek Martin blew the whistle. I think from his angle, Martin thought it was in the glove. Big save by Littman. Yeah, good scoring chance for Salt Lake on the power play. Their second opportunity in the game. They've had only one previous. And uh, Littman was able to make the stop coming back in after replacing uh, Manon Royale 549 into the second period. Good scoring chance. Big story for Salt Lake. The leading goal and point scorer, uh, Patrick LeBeau, is not in the lineup tonight. He was uh, ill earlier today and also hurt his foot. So for a couple of reasons, he's out of the lineup uh, for Salt Lake and a big scratch for them offensively. 14 goals, 16 assists, 30 points. LeBeau. Well, they give up the puck and Julia trying to make a play. Short-handed the Knights with a chance. Julia bumped off the play by Forsland. Good play by Forsland, but the puck's still loose. Julia still playing it. Now it comes here to Wartman. He feeds Forsland, and Salt Lake heads up the rink. Just under a minute left on the power play, and offside is called at the blue line. Well, the Golden Eagles having a scoring chance in the power play, and the captain, Rich Turnamans, we will talk to him at the tail end of the period. He's approaching the franchise record in games played and points. Last year, he broke the franchise record set by Doug Palazzari, who played with the St. Louis Blues at the NHL, and goals scored. So, approaching the all-time games played and scoring championship, and that's set originally by Lyle Bradley, a longtime player in the Central League in the old Western Hockey League. Salt Lake bangs the puck in. A centering attempt taken away by the Knights, and they flip it into the crowd. You mentioned during the intermission we'll be chatting with Chernomaz. We also have a feature on Derek Martin, the referee. He's in the NHL training program. He's been in the IHL for a few years. Could break ground as the first black NHL referee. And we'll talk with him about that and a number of other things in a most interesting feature put together for the second intermission. Good referee. The main thing he does, he knows how to keep control of the game, and he plays it evenly. Blows the whistle or doesn't blow the whistle, depending on the play of the game and the flow of the game. Born in Chicago, followed the Blackhawks growing up. And keeping tabs on this one right now. The Golden Eagles. On the power play for another 30 seconds. St. Pierre. Stoke back to St. Pierre. He fires on a goal! I think that's Gillingham again on a deflection. If not, it belongs to St. Pierre, who got it between Littman and the post on the near side. And it's two to nothing. And the Golden Eagles, who have been struggling on the power play, have four power play goals now in their last two games. One of the few players from Newfoundland, Labrador City, and Gillingham's excited about it. He hopes his family is watching there on the satellite, but I'll tell you what, uh, I believe he reflected that as St. Pierre let go of the big drive. He was there, got a stick on it, I'm sure. In fact, that shot might have been going wide. Here we'll have another look. St. Pierre let it go, and I'm fairly sure he got that stick on it and beat him to the stick side. So give credit to Gillingham for the goal. And the puck is back in the Atlanta zone. The Golden Eagles with a 2 nothing lead here. They lead the Atlanta Knights in the season series two games to one. And now Atlanta breaks the center. Julia across the line onside for Capuano. Stepped in by Osborne. Rolled in front. Trefanoff steers it back in front. Here's the center. During the half point of the hockey game. Ten and a half minutes to go in the second period. The Golden Eagles by a two. Capuano taken down, no call. Osborne to Rivers. He lets fly the wrist shot. Loose in front. 
Steered to the side by the defense and a penalty coming up. Another holding call will have the penalty after we take this time out. The Golden Eagles have scored twice in the second period. This is the IHL on Prime. Ball length penalty called against number five, Kevin Melrose. Two minutes for holding time on the penalty, 9.41 on the second period. Melrose holding at 9.41. <laughs> the Atlanta Knights are going back on the power play on this penalty. Well, Kevin Melrose just knocked Capuano flying to the ice in front of the Salt Lake net, held him prior to that, and then gave him a little glove sandwich to boot and picks up the holding penalty. Time of the infraction, 9.41, the sixth power play for Atlanta. And they are 0 for 5 in this game so far with the man advantage. Shots on goal, 23 to 8 in favor of the Knights. And believe it or not, they trail 2-0. Well, the Knights have controlled the puck well on the power play, but have not uh, generated any scores at this point. Now Rivers. To the far side. There's a booming shot. Save the rebound. Still loose in front. Clear to the side by the defense. Once again, the Atlanta Knights do everything but score. The Salt Lake defense right there for their goaltender, Trefiloff. Well, I think Trefiloff was the first line of defense on the first shot, I believe, by Gretzky. Then they were able to clear it away in the second chance, but he made a dazzler on the initial shot into the Salt Lake zone. Now Gretzky's pass knocked wide and cleared by the defense. Shots on goal. Strongly favoring Atlanta, but as it is so often, the opportunities have gone to Salt Lake. Nice move by Lands away from a check. But Gretzky on his left. Now Rivers to Gretzky to Lands. Stevenson in front of the net. Hodge behind the net and a pass to the point. Nobody home. And the Atlanta fans react negatively. Lands reloads the gun from the safety of his own net. And Rivers. There's a long one off the glass. Shuffle off. Steers it all the way down. He's made 24 saves to this point and twice has cleared it all the way down. He acts as a third defenseman in his goal crease. 23 seconds left on the manpower advantage and the Knights misplay the puck again. Now LaPuma with Harris who takes the puck away. Bernamaz in Boston. Check that Hafey in Boston. And now Capuano. Five seconds on the power play. Capuano. Far point in La Puma. A low wrist shot. Off the backboard. Roll right in front. Osborne tied up. Couldn't play the puck. The penalty is over. Teams are back at five on five. The shot wide. Top to center. And now here's a one-on-one -on -one for Harris. With La Puma to beat. Lacuma takes him down, no penalty, and the puck cleared by Capuano. Too far on his pass, intercepted by Spruce. The Golden Eagles jumping in. Penalty coming up here. Littman got hit. Gillingham was behind the play. He hit Littman. He's going off. And to the defense of the goaltender, there go the Atlanta Knights. There could be more penalties coming up here. No question, Gillingham just ran over Littman as he came out of his goal crease area. You know, it's funny, uh, they had talked about if Manon Rayom came in with the players run her, nobody talked about Littman, but Gillingham came charging in like a freight train to the side of the goal as Littman went to play the puck. Now 
Littman kind of made a move back in toward Gillingham to make sure he couldn't play the puck. And Gillingham just kind of let him have it. And now LaPuma is going off. I think he's going to get a roughing penalty. There's going to be a cross check, I am sure, on Gillingham here in period two. We'll check all the penalties out when we come back. It's two to nothing, Salt Lake City at the Omni. This is the IHL on Prime. The Omni with Mike Barrick, Ken Double with you, and here's another look. There's the roughing, and then LaPuma, boom, there's the cross check. We got two players in the penalty box. It would have been a power play for the Knights instead, four on four, because of that extra penalty called against LaPuma, who gets the cross check in the teams at even strength. Face off in the neutral zone, Spruce and Lafreniere. Lafreniere in the white jersey for Atlanta wins the draw from center ice. The Golden Eagles fire it in. A lot of room on the rink. We're four on four in front of the goaltenders again. The Puma sitting for, I believe, his third penalty. He's found the penalty box a little too much to his liking tonight to suit Dean Ubliaco. Now it's an offside across the line. Then select rule just ahead of the puck a little bit. He picked up a game misconduct in the game Saturday. As you mentioned, three minors for the Puma in this game. And uh, he's played the very physical style on defense. Dean Ubriaco talking things over with Derek Martin and pleading with him about that last play. Can't believe that it's an even strength situation after Gillingham knocked down Lippman in his the side of the goal. Now the face-off in the neutral zone. Buchanan to Vincelet, and the Knights retreating to set up shop. Dan Vincelet has played with Chicago and Quebec, as we mentioned now in the Philadelphia organization, but remaining here in Atlanta until Philly decides exactly what to do. Their Hershey Farm Club is loaded. They've got four or five players sitting now. Now Stoltz dodges the check from Lafreniere. Into the center, and here's the captain, Rich Turnamon. Six saves by Littman. Back the other way, taken away by Wartman. Got Turnamon's right in front, and Rivers intercepts the play. Big defensive stop there by Rivers. Now Vincelet pushes it in. And Melrose plays the puck. Leaves it behind the net, Vinny. Boy, he was tired after that shift. Just fell down. It was a long shift for him, and now it's getting off in a line team. Well, there might be some concern on the Atlanta bench. He had knee surgery and is coming back. Injured his knee earlier this year, and the way he got up went down and then slowly got up. There might have been a little concern that maybe he had hurt the knee again, but I think you're right. I think he was just pooped. Now Boston. Steve Stevenson flying up the way of blast, and he just missed the post. A rebound! Shot by Osborne over the crossbar. Now Stevenson has it. Stevenson looking for the play. Stevenson. Osborne manhandled in front of player. Pushed into the cage. Yeah, no no gave, penalty called here. No oh my. Gage Stevenson is shot to the right of the goal. A ninth had a couple of players in the slot area, but it was... Uh, uh, Stevenson, who gets up slowly now to the right of the net, tugging himself there. Melrose didn't like him taking position to the right of the solo goal and let him know it. But as you mentioned, Martin, let it go. 5.42 left to go here in the second period. And we're coming back for more hockey from the Omni. The Golden Eagles still leading 2 to nothing. This is the IHL on Prime. Leadership report to the Knights customer service booth at 445 to claim their prize. Atlanta Flames 
This telecast is the property of Prime Network and the International Hockey League. Any rebroadcast or retransmission without the express written consent of Prime Network or the IHL is prohibited. With Mike Barrett, Ken Double back at the Omni. Wild activity behind the Salt Lake net. Well, the Knight nice Stevenson had possession being held to the right of the Salt Lake goal. The puck was centered. The net was dislodged as Melrose gave Stevenson a shot. Not only knocked off Stevenson, but the net him, uh, itself and the treble up outside the goal crease. Looks like a twister game in front of the goal. Not only that, Kevin Guy had Osborne all wrapped up. A lot of activity off the faceoff. A shot by Boston deflected wide. Now Osborne holding all over him. Capilano throws it in front. Had his stick all tied up. Almost tried to kick it into the net. That would not have counted. Trefilov hangs on the whistle and another faceoff coming up. Trefilov, as usual, his acrobatic, sensational self. He's faced 25 shots and stopped them all. And this one from close range in a good glove save for him. He was the backup for Mikhail Stalinkov on the Olympic team last year for the CIS team that won the gold medal. Imagine the backup. And he played four games in the Olympics, but in the gold medal game, Stalinkov was in net and Trefilov uh, was watching the hat that's the gold medal to his credit. Clark put a hit on Boston back there. And the Knights clear to set it. He was part of a Moscow Dynamo team as well that won a championship in the Soviet Elite League. Dynamo is right. And the puck loose at center ice. Steered back into the Atlanta zone. Boston bumped again. Salt Lake definitely with the momentum in this second period. After a scoreless first period, they've scored twice and have spent a lot more time in the Atlanta zone than they did in the first 20 minutes. Nice move here by Wartman. He did everything but score, fired it wide, and then the rebound popped up over the glass. What a move by Wartman. Yeah, Wartman has tremendous moves. He's a very offensive defenseman and was able to make one. And unfortunately for him and the Golden Eagles, uh, not able to put it home, but a uh, scramble in front of the net, as you mentioned, kind of a whirly do girly, whirling dervish type of thing. Looked a la Dennis Savard on that particular play. Went from his backhand to his forehand, then let the shot go, and it was deflected wide. David Lippman. Out of Boston College, a native of Cranston, Rhode Island, 25 years old. Would like to try his hand at broadcasting or acting. Has uh, done a little bit of that, not a lot. Good looking kid. There's a shot fired by Stoke, never got to the goaltender. Now a bouncing puck, here by Atlanta. John Bluin leaves it here for Hodge. Right up with Stoke. And the Knights dump it in. Out of the near side. Out of the far side. Atlanta four checking. Hodge leaves it in the corner for Bluen. Tied up with Wartman. Digging for the puck. Oh, Bergman takes a big bump from behind. That was some check by McCarthy. Now the Knights have the puck, but it's cleared to center. Face for the puck. Good job down there by Nicholas. And Lippman hangs on. No fisticuffs, no problem there. Bob Francis, the coach of the Golden Eagles. Quietly surveying the scene at this point. Got to be happy on this final leg of the road trip that his team is leading. And I'll guarantee you he's hoping this game gets over with in regulation time because they have a flight out of here at 1040 tonight to get back to Salt Lake. Face-off coming in the Atlanta zone. The puck won by the Knights. Harris lost his skate. And now lands from the red line, dumps it in. Trefilov leaves it for the defense. Battle along the near boards. Now Lafreniere with it. To the far point in the river. Around Harris. Rolls it in front. Penalty coming up on Salt Lake. The Frenier. Now Vincelette. It's played by the Golden Eagles and the holding call coming up. 
the Atlanta Knights are going back on the power play. It'll be their seventh power play opportunity of the hockey game. Kevin Melrose, number five, going to the penalty box. Melrose, the 26-year-old defenseman, takes the holding call at 16.54 of the second period. So the Knights, right here at the end of the period, with just 3.06 left, have an opportunity to try and get on the scoreboard. They have now played almost eight periods of hockey against Krefeloff and have scored only two goals. And at this point, 0 for 6 on the power play tonight. Now the Knights play to the far corner. Osborne and Guy. Drulia comes in to make the play, number 20. Dumped by Guy. Now Osborne with it. Try to get it to Hodge. Off the skate, it's played by Drulia. He falls down. Now he gets up as he plays the puck here to Capuano. Guy digging after the puck. Now it goes to the far point and Hodge. Now Drulia. From a tough angle, the puck bouncing into the slot. Played by Land. Oh, right in front was Osborne. The pass deflected on a good play defensively. Now it's played to the point, kept in by Hodge. Here's Land. Julia moving to the front of the net. Here's Capuano. Back to Land's a one-timer. Fired it wide. Forslund waits and clears the zone. 54 seconds left on the power play opportunity for Atlanta. We're just under two minutes left in the second period. Two to nothing. The Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights. Lafreniere loses off the skate right in front. Near miss for Struce as he missed the near post. Now Lafreniere with Struce tying him up. Puck tipped here to land. Stevenson. Loses the puck and Spruce dumps it ahead with now 22 seconds left on the power play. Now Land. Lafreniere. Across the line, Lafreniere. Right up. The puck jammed loose from the corner and as it goes on net, Trefilov jumps out. Just... Three seconds left on that power play. Melrose will be out of the box right after this faceoff. Stay with us during the second intermission. We'll chat with Rich Chernamaz of the Salt Lake City Golden Eagles. We'll also have that feature on Derek Martin, the referee. And then third period hockey coming up after that. A front of the air to take the draw with Hapey. AP wins the faceoff, but the Knights play the puck in the far corner. Right in front. Stevenson couldn't get a stick on the centering pass. Here's by Wartman off the glass to center with exactly a minute left in the period. Now the Knights fire it back in. Wartman fans on his clearing pass. Rolls it up the near side. And Harris with Hapey and Nicola. Played by Atlanta. Stevenson across the line for Vincelet. Vinny goes into the board, takes the player with him. Nicholas follows up and jams Vinny into the glass. Penalty coming up. The penalty coming up on Atlanta. There's the whistle as Nicholas and Vincelet are going at. They both have the arm free, Nicholas. One tough cookie and Vinny, no stranger to this kind of activity. Nicholas trying to lift Vinny off the ice by the pants. Almost got it done. Now the linesmen step in. And they separate the combatants. And Nicholas and Vincelet will head to the penalty boxes. I believe there will be an extra two minutes assessed here. And now the penalty was coming up on the Atlanta Knights before the fight broke out. Vinny headed to the locker room. Discussion at the scorer's table in the penalty box. As Derek Martin hands out the penalties. 
Take another look at it here as Vince Select takes the pop right there from Nikolic after he put Wartman to the rink in the chase for the puck. Now Martin is explaining to uh, Lafreniere and Harris what the penalties are. There you see Nikolic in the penalty box. A tough cookie out of Sudbury, Ontario. Big kid, as you can see, 215 pounds. 35 minutes in penalties so far coming into this game as Bob Francis now talks about talks about his strategy. There's another look at it again. Vince Lett is going to take two minutes for high sticking and a five-minute fighting penalty. Nikolic will take five minutes for fighting. The penalty's coming up at the 1935 mark, just 25 seconds left here in the second period. So this means that the Knights will be shorthanded for two minutes. If the Golden Eagles do not score, this power play will carry over into the third period. Dino Briaco in Atlanta. Sends out Lafreniere and Berglund, the forwards on the penalty killing line, with Lapuma and Buchanan on the back line. The power play unit centered by Hafey for the Golden Eagles. They also have McCarthy and Forsland as the forwards. Now, Derek Martin indicating that we've got to have play resume. Instead, we have to get an Atlanta Knight player to serve the penalty minutes. And at this point in time, it'll be Keith Osborne heading to the penalty box. He will serve the penalty as Vince Alette on the fighting call has gone to the locker room. Off the draw, the Knights get an opportunity to shot from the far point by Lapuma. Good blocker save by Trefalon. Now Hafey with 12 seconds left in the period. There you see the time remaining in the second period. Golden Eagles dump it in. Buchanan takes the bump. Now Guy fires right at the horn. It's wide, and the period is over. Second period goals for Salt Lake. A little more pushing and shoving in front of the Atlanta net. Cooler heads, I think, will prevail here. Get these teams to their respective locker rooms and get ready for third period action. But two second period goals for the Atlanta Knights. And indeed an interesting second period that saw Manol Rayon make her IHL debut. Not spectacular by any means, but nonetheless, she got her first minutes of action and gets a fine response from the crowd as she heads to the locker room. It's two to nothing, Salt Lake City, after 40 minutes of play. You're watching hockey from the Omni. IHL Hockey on the Prime Network. We're coming right back. Got the times of the goals there, handy guys. I'm gonna ask you about what the reaction was in the bench about the goal. What the feeling was. The uh, fact that how Andre is played. I got it. 323 and 838. Ask him how, how long is this gonna be? There's no monitor. What's that? How how long will I will I how long is the interview gonna last? Okay, two, two and a half. Okay. This will be interesting. Yeah, no problem. You going right to him or are you coming to me first? 
thanks. <laughs> I learned this one. Okay. Very good. That was for you. It was for him. If you needed it at all. Oh, right. Okay. All right. One more? Sorry, I'm going to it. It's all right. I had to jump in for him anyway. Okay. Good to roll. at the Omni. Ken Double with you. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights 2 to nothing. We're in our second intermission and we're going down to Mike Barrick who's got the Salt Lake captain Rich Turnamaz with him. Mike? Well, Rich Turnamaz is probably a little bit happy because his team has a, having a 2 to nothing lead at the end of 40 minutes of play. And Rich, uh, Manon Rayon, the big story. It was scoreless after one. She came in. What was the reaction of the Salt Lake players in regards to her coming in next? Well, I think, uh, you know, the guys, uh, you know, we talked about in the dressing room, we only got three shots the first period, and, uh, and our reaction was we're going to make sure we get the, get some shots and get them on net. And, uh, you know, we uh, scored one that they disallowed on the second shot that she had, so, you know, it was a good indication. And then Ty Gilliam came out of the box, scored on a nice goal, so uh, I got us going a little bit, and then we got into the second one. Now we just got to come out, play strong serve, play good defensively, and uh, keep getting some good shots. I'm with Rich Turnaman, the Salt Lake captain, and Rich, was there a, a book on Manon Rayom? Did the guys talk about what to do when she came in net? Well, it's like I said, Mike, you know, guys want to make sure they're driving in the net to try and create some rebounds and some loose openings for us to create some opportunities for us. I'm sure she was a little nervous in that tonight, but, uh, you know, she got, didn't stand there long, and, uh, you know, I hope in, in the future she gets another opportunity. 26 to 11, the shots on goal in the hockey game so far. Andre Trefiloff have stopped them all. What do you think about the Salt Lake goaltender? Well, you know, we talked and uh, regrouped in the first period, and guys said, we, you know, we got to come out and play a lot stronger effort and uh, not depend on Andre so much. You know, he's played one of his uh, regular outstanding games again, and, uh, you know, when you make save after save like that, it, it, it does nothing but help the guys uh, start producing a little better uh, offensively and defensively out there, and I think the second period indicated that a little bit and now we just got to go out and play the same way in the third. Richard, this is your sixth season in Salt Lake. You're the captain and uh, last season set the franchise record for goals scored this season, perhaps games played and also overall scoring from Lyle Bradley. You've been in Salt Lake six years. You've seen the progression of the IHO. What do you think about this league right now? What's going on? Well, Mike, I think every year the league just seems to get stronger and uh, seems to be a bigger market out there for it. I, I think it's become really world-class now with some of the players that we're getting from Europe, and uh, I just see this thing getting bigger and better uh, as the years goes on, and uh, it's a real good product for the people to come out and watch. All right, Rich, best of luck to you and the Eagles the rest of the way. Great, thanks, Mike. Rich Turnaman is captain of the Salt Lake Golden Eagles to score 2 to nothing in favor of the Atlanta Knights.
Yeah, a little bit. Okay. We're back at the Omni. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights two to nothing. And during the second intermission, they're honoring the Atlanta Flames. And there you see Bernie Boom Boom Jeffrey on their first coach here with the Flames. And a number of the players, Tom Lysiak and Mike Vale and uh, so many others uh, still live in the area. Kurt Bennett, a former Flame, is uh, an assistant coach with the Atlanta Knights as well as a successful businessman. There's uh, Lysiak, a 50-goal scorer in his career in the National Hockey League, now with Atlanta, but in uh, his day. And uh, so many of the fans here so in love with their Atlanta Flames and so disappointed when they moved in 1980 to Calgary. And they still have fond memories of that bunch and a nice ceremony here in the Omni for those fellas who got their own Atlanta Knights jerseys. Now we're going to have an interesting feature for you as uh, we take a look at a day in the night, uh, uh, I should say a day in the life of a referee. And this is Derek Martin, who might be the first black NHL referee in history. Tomahawk chop. I don't have a puck. Well, you got the hat on, man. I don't have the hat on. He's the, he's the puck man. He's the puck man. Stop running for mayor. Let's go. Team's out here. Hey, listen. We want to listen. Don't point your finger at me. Listen, Gene. I didn't see anything over there. Okay. Clarky, that's it. Capital, let's go. He's in the box already. I think uh, the race issue is, is a, a problem here in the in, in hockey, so to speak. I think it's more of a hockey's, I shouldn't say a Canadian sport, but it's dominated more by Canadians where uh, black, white issue in, the, in Canada is, is, is really not an issue. It's an issue here in the United States. I think I've, I receive more problems from fans where I went into some towns when I'm paying my dues coming up the, the minor leagues and before that where I, just, I thought I was the back black population of the town when I arrived. So uh, most people, when, when I go into that setting, they're not used to seeing a black period, and then they see a black in authority, and they have a hard time with that. Maybe hockey is a little bit better than maybe the rest of society, where they're more accepting. If you have the ability to, to play the sport, officiate the sport, coach the sport, you're getting the opportunity. And whoever has the, the ability to succeed will. If you don't, then you will drop out. We have a tremendous growth of hockey throughout all of North America, all the leagues sprouting up, and the, the amount of attendance that has taken place. And if we can get more exposure on national TV, ESPN, ABC, Prime Network, we can uh, expose the sport to a vast variety of people. And once people see the sport of hockey, I can't believe that they won't be hooked on it. IHL veteran referee Derek Martin, who is undoubtedly headed to the NHL as an official, an outstanding referee here, and has been for a long time. We're in our second intermission. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights 2 to nothing, and we will be back with statistics and more after we take this timeout. This is the IHL on Prime.
Oh. You can always save it for later. Get it in there somewhere. With, oh. Going to see Gillingham out of the box first, right? We're back at the Omni with Mike Barrick. This is Ken Double. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights 2 to nothing after the first two periods of play. And I'll apologize to Mike Vale, the baseball player. It's Eric Vale who used to play hockey here with the Atlanta Flames. Here's Gillingham coming right out of the penalty box. And he gets the puck and scores, makes it one to nothing. Yeah, he was uh, able to get down the left wing side in the first ever goal scored against Manon Rayom in professional hockey. And whom he let it fly as he was uh, working into that Atlanta goal. Tough break for Manon Rayom, who was able to... Uh, clear the uh, unable to clear the puck uh, outside of that she made a couple of stops and her debut was not a disaster by any means so Gillingham scores the first goal and then he gets the deflection and scores the second goal David St. Pierre let go of the slapper and Gillingham got his stick up and deflected at home behind David Littman and they scored two to nothing at the end of the second period Todd Gillingham with both scoring plays for Selick a free agent signed by the Flames in 1991 last year played in St. John's is uh, very close to his hometown in Newfoundland and scores a couple here. And the Golden Eagles have the two to nothing lead at the end of 40 minutes of play. Interesting, they get the offense from him. He only had three goals coming into the game all season. Known more for his rough, tough play, but he got the job done here in the second period for the Golden Eagles to give them the two to nothing lead. And uh, it'll be their nightmare only if the Knights can come back in the third period. <laughs> yeah, no question about it. And they've done a great job on uh, the marketing here in Atlanta and used that nickname to their advantage with the goaltender, the Atlanta Knights with the mask, and uh, they've done a gr terrific job, a great crowd here tonight uh, for this uh, International Hockey League game. And what's interesting tonight, uh, Ken, is the fact that the shots on goal clearly in favor of Atlanta, the 26 to 11 opportunities, and Trefiloff has been terrific, uh, making 26 saves, and the fans really enjoying it here in Atlanta, 26 to 11 overall, 2 nothing Salt Lake, and, of course, uh, coming into the third period, the goaltender, Trefiloff, with 26 saves. The power play is clearly an advantage of Atlanta as far as the opportunities, but the Eagles' penalty killing has been perfect. So when we come back, we'll have third period action and more as the IHL is being brought to you on the Prime Network. We'll be back after this timeout. We're back at the Omni, and we'll be back on television on most Prime affiliates next Friday, December the 19th. Cleveland takes on Cincinnati in the, uh, check that, that's Saturday, I'm sorry. December the 19th is Saturday, not Friday. Thanks, getting corrected in the truck. Thanks, guys. 
don't sit here with a calendar right in front of me. <laughs> anyway, it's Saturday, and uh, what's interesting there is the Atlanta Knights play in the Atlantic Division of the Eastern Conference, and these are their two division rivals, Cleveland and Cincinnati, and the standings mean that this is an important game for Cincinnati. They've been struggling a little bit, and neither of the teams with a winning record at this point, but Cincinnati, that would be a couple of big points for them in trying to chase Cleveland. Fort Wayne, as we said at the top of the telecast, they've been hot. Indianapolis has been kind of hot and cold. Indianapolis has been struggling on their home ice, and Kalamazoo has also been struggling somewhat this year. There you have a look at the Eastern Conference standings. Right now, Atlanta and Fort Wayne, the strong teams. Milwaukee and San Diego have been strong all year, and that's San Diego. That's an unbelievable story. At one point, they were 22-0-3. It took... 25 games into the year before Phoenix finally got them in 60 minutes of regulation time. 6-2, the Roadrunners won that game, and it's incredible. Uh, uh, 17 players, I believe, with the National Hockey League experience on that hockey team, coached by Rick Dudley, and they have been beating up on everybody this season in the International League, and Milwaukee in first place in the Midwest, both independent teams in the IHL. As you look at the standings, unlike the National Hockey League, OTL, there are no ties in this league. That's overtime losses. At the end of regulation, if the teams are tied, each team gets one point. They play a five-minute overtime to award a winner the second point. If it's still tied after overtime, they have that incredible shootout to, again, award the second point. So there are no ties in the IHL, and that's what the overtime loss column means. That means one point awarded for the overtime loss, two points for the team that eventually wins, either in overtime or in the shootout. That's what makes San Diego's record so impressive is the fact that in their uh, 28 games this year, 27 have gone uh, either when they've had the lead and won the game or gone into an overtime situation, Ken. So that's a, a real interesting statistic uh, considering the number of games they've at least gained a point. And the uh, Knights have been all over Salt Lake as far as the shots on goal and trample off his face 26 shots and stop them all. He's been incredible. We talked about it from the top. He's very unorthodox. He split, we saw him uh, in Salt Lake City. He did the splits and went down at about the time a player wound up for a slap shot and then threw his glove high and made the save when he really didn't need to go down at all. Completely unorthodox, but again, it all adds up to spectacular numbers. A great one loss record, a great goals against, and he's working on a shutout here. 52 saves in one game this season against the Milwaukee Admirals and a two to one victory over the Milwaukee team at the Delta Center in Salt Lake. And he spent a year and four months without playing hockey at all, Ken. He played uh, hockey, of course, at uh, the Soviet Elite League with Moscow Dynamo, but actually spent a year and four months without playing hockey, serving his time in the Russian Army. He has yet to score a shutout this year in IHL play, as you see the Atlanta Knights come back out onto the rink. But he's working on it here at 20 minutes away from his first flanking of an opponent. Now, as we start this third period, the Atlanta Knights will be completing a penalty, a minute 20, a minute 36, rather, to be served on the penalty to Dan Vincelet. So the Atlanta Knights will be shorthanded. Salt Lake will have that opportunity to increase the lead. I've heard a lot of coaches talk, Mike, about the fact that the most dangerous lead in hockey is a two-goal lead. There is sometimes the uh, desire to not so much relax, but begin playing a little too defensively, not to uh, uh, attack quite as much, and that the next goal becomes so important, it either creates the three-goal lead or allows the trailing team to get a little momentum and get back into it. Well, for Salt Lake, they have not blown a lead this year. They have a record of 12-0-1 when leading or tied at the end of 40 minutes of play, and they obviously have done very well when leading, and the Knights went trailing after two. Not bad. Four comeback victories for them, four and five, when trailing through two, so you have a team that's very good at protecting the league against a team that's very good at coming back in the Atlanta Knights. There you see David Littman. Meno Rayom back to the bench after her near six-minute run of it during the second period. She's been a spectacular story. She's just delightful. Uh, still struggling a little bit with her English, and yet she's uh, been under the microscope as only the media can provide it and handled it all very well. She's also, as you can imagine, uh, much in demand for uh, different uh, endorsements and things. 
you touched on it earlier she looks good for the camera and she said it takes her an hour to get ready just like all the other girls <laughs> out of quebec she made quite a splash on the david letterman show and she talked about the fact that Aki is my passion <laughs> no question about it from quebec city she idolized daniel bouchard who played goal here in Atlanta with the Atlanta Flames and also with the Quebec Nordiques. We're underway. The teams have changed ends again. And the Knights, shorthanded, clear the zone. Atlanta in the white jerseys moving offensively to the left. The Golden Eagles with the lead and the puck. And the manpower advantage for another one minute and four seconds. Moving offensively to the right. Set it behind the net. up in the far corner, Buchanan number two. Leaves it for Berglund. He takes a bump on the near side. Dillingham takes a check on the near side and the puck is sent all the way down by the Knights. Unbelievable truffle off outside the blue line there and I believe a delayed penalty coming up against Atlanta. Atlanta getting a penalty indeed and there's a quick shot and a save as Trefiloff played the puck clear up beyond the blue line and then went to the bench. I remember uh, Glenn Hall used to do that occasionally, would try and pick up an assist to Eddie Jackman, did it tremendously for the New York Rangers, but Treffle off a little dipsy doodle there into the neutral zone on that uh, last possession. And Buchanan, it's two minutes for roughing, and now as the Atlanta Knights had the two-man advantage for a while in the first period, the Golden Eagles will get a two-man advantage here in the third period for 34 seconds. That's what remains on the Vincelette penalty, and now Buchanan for slashing at the 102 mark here in the third period, and so the Knights will be down two men. While well, the Eagles already have the two to nothing lead and have a great opportunity to build on that here with the two-man power play, and uh, we'll see uh, uh, how the Knights do in that uh, penalty killing situation. They have uh, up front for the Atlanta hockey team, uh, Lafreniere will uh, drop and he'll be the only forward on this penalty kill, Lands and also Rivers on the back line. Let's also mention that Vince Lett will have to sit an additional five minutes for his fighting penalty. It'll be Osborne to come out of the box in another 25 seconds. Now, Wharton has a little room, just missed the far post. Hafey with it. Wharton, back to Hafey. Wartman again deflected and a skate save and a dandy by Littman and Lafreniere clears it. There are seven seconds on the first penalty. A minute and a half on the second penalty. Forsland. Here's Wartman, a lot of room, a shot and a save, a dandy by the goaltender and out of the penalty box on Ford all alone. Skates it down in the corner, spins it around the near side, had no angle on Trefilov. And now the Golden Eagles. Oh, a near miss for the Knights on that one. As they just missed the connection with Osborne coming out of the box. And they clear the zone. I think the ice uh, coming off to the start of the period, the puck rolled on him a little bit. And had he been able to hold on to it, then he would have had that breakaway. Now St. Pierre around Le or, uh, La Puma. Golden Eagles keep it alive. Big collision on the near side, and Lacoma over to clear the zone. Now across the line, Berglund spins away from the check, lagging a little time with 30 seconds left on the manpower advantage for the Golden Eagles. Now Stolt feeds it up the far side, and St. Pierre dumps it in. Littman feeds it up the far side. Ten seconds left on the power play. And the Knights clear to center. Now Guy has to wait for his teammates to get on side. He does. Littman drops it. Boston plays it. Dangerously in front of his own net. Intercepted by St. Pierre. Great job of the Knights. They didn't really allow too many scoring chances on that two-man power play. And they're able to kill him off. Still two to nothing, Golden Eagle. Here's Osborne with a three-on-three -three rush. Stevenson cutting in. Stevenson whipped around and a penalty coming up. The Knights will have a power play. Stevenson getting around the defense on his way to the net. Ripped down to the ice. And when we come back, we'll have power play hockey for the Atlanta Knights. 
It's two to nothing Salt Lake, and this is the IHL on the Prime Network. Stevenson, number 19, demonstrating those wheels here. Kevin Melrose had no other choice but to haul him down to the right of the goal. Melrose out of Harvard, played for an NCAA championship uh, team there as the pass was made across Stevenson on his backhand, and Melrose did the only thing he could, I guess, to keep him from scoring the goal and made him pay for it, but Melrose pays for it with a minor penalty. So Melrose sits two minutes for holding, at the 325 mark into the third period the knights are on the power play 0 for 7 so far tonight third in the league at 22 percent plus they were two for seven in yesterday's game and really if they want to get back into the hockey game this is their opportunity to cash in trying to feed it in front truly had it knocked down by the defense now osborne the league's leading goal scorer beats Drulia. The Knights, again, all season long, have not just peppered the net with shots. It has been their plan and their play to move the puck around. Early on, they were a cow behind the net. They feed land. Early on, they were very successful, near 30% for the first 10 or 11 games. And as it has all around the league, San Diego has even settled down to where they're around 25% on the power play. Here's Capuano. Dave Capuano, he's got a brother, Jack, who plays hockey. Another cousin who plays hockey. Land fires it too high. Hodge rolled it in front, deflected by the defense. And now Turnamaz sends it all the way down. Just missed connecting with Bruce on that play. The Eagles playing a tight box. Both times in the Salt Lake defensive zone, the Knights kept the puck in the perimeter, but not able to get a flat shot in front of Truffle or even one from the point. Now Hodge. He can fire the puck, and he won't hesitate if he sends the opener. Stevenson, far circle. Gretzky with the puck. He's been quiet tonight after two good offensive games in a row. Stevenson, Gretzky, right in front. Shot, save, and air had the puck. Couldn't really tee it up. Threw it on net in a hurry, but Trefiloff had the stick on the ice and then smothered it. Minute 32 gone into the penalty. Trefiloff makes the save on the first tight shot, Ken, on that power play. The Knights were frustrated. They were passing the puck beautifully on the perimeter. That was their first close-in shot on that uh, power play, and it was set up to the left of the goal. Gretzky waited no time at all to feed Lafreniere right in front, and Jason fired it right away, but again, the book on Trefilov is shoot the puck high, but no time to really tee it up at all. There's a high shot from Rivers and a good glove save by Trefilov. Well, I'm not sure if shooting high is necessarily the best. He's frankly in his glove side because that's his strength as well. I guess if they're going to beat him high, they're going to beat him above the shoulder on the short side, but I'll tell you what, he's uh, pretty strong with that glove hand on the high shots as well. Young goalie is just outstanding. And of course, as the voice of Salt Lake, Mike, you're around him a lot. What a colorful young fella he is. He's great. I'll tell you what, he's, uh, English is not great, but uh, he's learning. And uh, I'll tell you what, he's just a great guy. The, the, the players love to be around him, and they've really banded around him as well. Doesn't call you Mike Barrick, he calls you Mike Radio. Misha Radio, <laughs> Misha TV today. Now <laughs> Rivers from a check by Brose. The pass too far for Gretzky. 
And now the penalty is over. The teams are back at five on five. The Golden Eagles have again thwarted the Knights on the power play for the eighth time. Salt Lake has played a much stronger game here tonight than they did yesterday. And again, evidence as to why they've been so much better over the last two, three weeks of the season. Flying into the attack zone. Oh, Clark would have been open in front. They couldn't get the puck to him. Atlanta the other way. Too far for Stevenson. Played at center ice by Gretzky. Cute move right through Street. Has to wait to get his teammates on side. Taken down. There'll be a penalty on the Golden Eagles. They touch the puck, and here's the call. Now Gretzky very upset. Took a pop. I think that's Gillingham. Yeah, he was leveled in across the line, and wow, the puck went into the corner, and another power play coming up for Atlanta. Now, there may be another penalty assessed here, though. The linesman in there, Gillingham, yeah. none too happy at all. Gretzky smiling, although he smiles all the time. Yeah, Kerry Clark popped him. And Ross uh, Chatcher sure. behind. Yep, yep. and uh, as a result, uh, another power play coming oh, up for Atlanta. Oh, and then Gillingham really tackled him good. Well, he saw the first one, and Clark's uh, being called off right now. Okay, we'll take a pause here and have this power play when we come back. It's 2 to nothing. the Golden Eagles. This is the IHL on Prime. Okay. How much time coming back? Excuse me. I'm through blowing my nose. at the Omni and here's Brent Gretzky across the line and he didn't get it once he got it twice. Gary Clark playing like his older brother Wendell a rambunctious soul and then Gillingham wrapped up Gretzky as well so he felt it twice and uh, Gillingham just tackled him that was not the penalty believe it or not it was the Clark first uh, check with his stick and then Gretzky gave him a little bit of a glove sandwich as well so Gillingham and then look at Stevenson well. come in there and keep Gretzky away to uh, avoid the penalty. Good play by Stevens. And there you see Gretzky, 160 pounds dripping wet. They have him working with nutritionists to try and figure out a way to get a little poundage on the frame, but built like his other two brothers, long and lean. Of course, and, uh, he's easily, in the physical play, bounced off the puck. Now Hodge with the puck. The Knights on the power play. Still trailing two to nothing. This is now their ninth power play opportunity. Osborne going low for the near post. A good skate save by Trefalon. Now Julia. Osborne cutting for the net. Hodge for the deep slot. A goal! The Knights break the ice. And get one past Trefalon. He's upset. It's a 2-1 to -one score on a power play goal by the Atlanta Knights. We'll have to see if it was deflected or if Hodge's low blast found the net all by itself. I believe Capuano was stationed in front, got a piece of it. It definitely was deflected with a couple of white shirts in front of the goal. Trepoff may have been screened on it. Osborne makes the original pass to the left wing side. It was dumped to the point, and then with a player stationed in front, Capuano may have gone off Kevin Guy. Osborne was there, too. It is now a 2-1 to one lead in favor of Salt Lake. The first power play goal and nine opportunities for the night. And there's obviously an old Atlanta Flames yeah. fan enjoying that one. So six and a half minutes into the third period, the Knights finally get on the scoreboard. This has happened as Salt Lake over the years. Uh, last season as well, a number of penalties with nine. Can the odds are you're going to score one. And the Knights have been a strong third period team most of the year. Is deflected up over the glass into the crowd. Number 20, Stan Julia. 
Rooney gets an assist. Hodge gets an assist. Indeed, the goal will go to Capuano. Dave gets his fifth of the year. Time of the goal, six and a half minutes into the third period. And there, Bob Francis, a little concerned now that perhaps the momentum, which was Atlanta's in the first period, definitely Salt Lake's in the second period, now may be swinging back to Atlanta. Drulli is fifth of the year, his third power up play goal from Hodge and Drulli at 6.30, and it's a 2-1 game. Now the puck in the Salt Lake zone, and cleared by the Golden Eagles. They break out of it, two on two. McCarthy scores! He got it inside the post. Littman, in cutting down the angle, didn't have it quite right to the near side. A big goal for the Golden Eagles who come right back and reestablish the two-goal lead. McCarthy made no mistake on a low shot to the near side just inside the pipe. It's 3-1 to one, Golden Eagles. McCarthy's a big man down the right wing side, and he just lets go a bullet, a lot of wood on the shot, low to the glove, and the Golden Eagles strike back to take a two-goal lead. Again, uh, a big drive, and he really let go as a whipper, and the Golden Eagles up by two. His sixth goal of the year, and now the Atlanta Knights thought they had momentum instead. A big goal coming back for the Golden Eagles. Here's Gretzky at center. Hodge try to play it across the line. Instead, now it's jumped in by LaPuma. Hodge the first one to it, far side. That much time remaining in the hockey game. The Knights again trailing two to Salt Lake. And the Golden Eagles clear the zone. McCarthy, a third round Flames pick in 1991. He's only 20 years of age. The youngest player on the Salt Lake hockey team, and my, oh my, uh, Howitzer down the right wing side. Big shot indeed. Big goal. Big two points here for Salt Lake finishing off this long road trip. As they try and establish themselves a little bit in the Western Conference. Now Gretzky, nice move in front. Had it poke checked off his stick as he was going down. And they clear it all the way down. We've got a nice and call coming here. And we're going to take time out. 3-1, to one, the Golden Eagles lead the Knights. 11.46 to go in the hockey game. You're watching the IHL on Prime Network. Oh, no, during the break. Ooh, good job, oh, guys. The assists on McCarthy's goal. Do you have the assists? The assists on McCarthy's goal. Hold it. Sandy McCarthy coming right at you. And man, he uh, beat to the goaltender Littman low to the glove side. And a rocket for McCarthy. You know, uh, he's a big man. Uh, he's the size 6'3", 225. The Flames drafted him for the toughness and for the play along the boards. If they could get some goals from him, that's great. And one of those rare commodities, a guy that can skate and score along with playing the body at that size. And when you get that size, Free wheeling up the ice like that. You get an awful lot of momentum behind that big shot. Now it's center ice. The puck played. And Nicholas rolls it into the Atlanta zone. It becomes now a little more of a territorial game for the Golden Eagle. With 11.20 left to go here in the hockey game. They'll want to become a little more protective. They certainly don't want to take any silly penalties here. Now the puck along the far side. Nicholas. Stevenson runs in into the boys. And it's jam at three. They tie up and we'll have the faceoff between Stevenson and Nicholas. Jersey, 
future and great Christmas and holiday gift giving ideas from the Atlanta Knights at the Merchandise Stand. We're here at the Omni, and we certainly hope you're enjoying the telecast. The first of many on Prime Network this year, the IHL. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights. 3-1 to one is the score, 11-10 remaining in the hockey game. Bob Francis has to be pleased that McCarthy scored that goal. The Eagles trying to catch a 10-40 flight. They did not want overtime here this evening, so maybe he said something to the bench to hurry up and get another goal. It's not over yet. 11 minutes. <laughs> no, you're, I took a little teasing and ribbing from your coach, Bob Francis. Uh, I'm the uh, regular radio voice of the Atlanta Knights uh, and have the privilege of doing these telecasts on Prime. And of course, Mike is the radio voice of the Golden Eagles is joining us on this telecast. There's a shot. And Bob Francis is saying, sure, sure. We'll be playing it right down the middle. Oh, Bergman stood up right at his blue line by Holden. Holden, a big guy at 6'3", 210. Made sure Bergman didn't get down the ice with the puck on that play. Either play the puck or play the body. And Holden did what he does best, played the body on that one. And all the Knights jump it in. Earlier, Gilling having a scoring chance into the Atlanta zone. He did score the hat trick. Well, that'd be a thrill for that guy. Double his output in one game. Now, here's Clark across the line. A low shot. Stick saved by Littman. And Stolt has it at center. Exactly 10 minutes to go in the hockey game. Across the line, Gretzky fires! And a glove save by Trefilov. And a good one. Got enough of it to steer it wide of the post. Now Gretzky digging after it. Capuano can't control it. The Golden Eagles send it up the near side. Boston pinching in, but McCarthy hits Trenomaz. His return pass taken away by Capuano. Nine and a half minutes left. The clock becoming a factor for Gino Griaco in the night. Now Hodge rolling it in front. A bouncing puck. Tipped toward the net by Capuano. But Trefiloff again with a good save. Now Littman takes a bump, tied up with McCarthy. Littman pushes the puck here to Boston. Littman trying to get free, finally does. He's back in the cage. And now here's Shane Stevenson. Stevenson up to the inside. Behind the net he comes, looking for the centering pass. Goes down, trying to actually pass it to himself. Now Rivers, his team changing on the play, and Buchanan pumps it in. And they'll rule it offside. Each 52 left to go. You know, it's amazing, Mike. Shots on goal favor Atlanta almost 2-1, to 32-17. to 17, And they've had all those opportunities on the power play. And yet Trefilov has just slammed the door all but once. Yeah, nine power plays for Atlanta. The Knights have to be very frustrated. The Golden Eagles very excited about a, a road victory. Uh, they've been outshot every game on the road trip. This is their fifth game of the trip. But uh, if they can pull out uh, another victory for them, they would be... We're very happy about the fact that they could have that goaltending and fill off those penalties and steal a road win. That's the kind of game you want to win on the road. Now Shane Steven, who had a, Stevenson, who had a cup of coffee with the Boston organization, won the draw. And the Knights bang it to center, but the bouncing puck is played instead by St. Pierre. Nicholas throws it into the zone. And Liddy sends it over to the far side. That's Littman, the goaltender. John Rivers play to center. Carried now by Holden. And now the Knights reload the gun in their own zone. Nearing the eight-minute mark left in the hockey game. Here's Osborne, the league's leading goal scorer. Nice move around Nikola from a bad angle. Fires! Trefilov got it between the pads and held on. Wow, another great save by him. He was actually backing up into his goal crease area, squeezed the pads together, and was able to make the stop. That one actually had so much mustard on it, he actually fell back a little bit in that goal crease area, but still kept the puck from going over that red line. Osborne made a nice move to get to this point, and then blistered a low shot, and Trefilov got it. He looked behind him for a moment also to see if it had gone in. Osborne, a former first-round St. Louis pick with the big right-handed shot. And Trefiloff, as mentioned, was able to make the thing. Osborne played most of his IHL career in Peoria. 
now with the Tampa Bay organization. In a free agent year, he's looking to have a big year and see if he can make his way to the NHL and sign with anybody next year. Now Wartman to Clark. Cross ice, Boston plays it for Atlanta. The Knights need a goal in a hurry just to have the opportunity to pull the goaltender and create a tie. And they had tough luck against Trefalov. He's been spectacular. Now the Puma shot. Blocker saved. It's cleared ahead but not out. Odds behind the net for Vincelet. Vinny Sanders went right through and in front was Bluea, but had his stick tied up. He couldn't make a play. Salt Lake throws it ahead. We have a ruling of a hand pass here, and we'll have uh, a face-off coming up here in a moment. We're here at the Omni. The score is three to one. The Golden Eagles lead the Atlanta Knights. Todd Gillingham with two goals, Sandy McCarthy with the third one, the scoring heroes for the Golden Eagles, but the real hero, their outstanding goaltender, Andre Trefilov has kicked them all out but one. Hard to believe. Uh, it seems so long ago that Manon Rayom played her five minutes in this hockey game, but Trefilov, again, uh, 31 saves on 32 shots here tonight. He's the 4-1-1 on the road. He's 8-2 on home ice, and whether it's home or uh, on the road, he's been strong uh, all season long for the Salt Lake hockey team. 2.72 goals against away from the Delta Center coming into the game here tonight. Now lands with a little room as a roll off the stick to the corner. Eyes up there, but Lafreniere plays the puck behind the net. Pops over Berglund's stick. Capuano loses the chase, but gets the puck from Turnemouth right in front of the air. Knocked down by Guy on a big play defensively by Salt Lake. Now Turnemouth the other way. The Eagles trying to pad the lead. A shot thrown high off the glass. Bouncing right through the crease. And a shot by Bruce. And a big save by Littman. A crazy carom off the glass. And almost another one there for the Golden Eagles. Now Bergland dumps it in. Guy has it from Trefalon. Eagles have been out shots here tonight, but uh, quite a few of their chances have been from close in. There's a pass that Forsland right in the back of the head. Now digging at it. Julius keeps it alive. The Knights keep it in. A bouncing puck now cleared by the Golden Eagles. Nearing the six-minute mark left in the hockey game. Three to one, Salt Lake leading Atlanta. Our first telecast on Prime. We hope you're enjoying it and will be with us all season long as we follow the IHL. We did the All-Star game from here last year. We'll be doing the All-Star game in Phoenix. Here's one all alone. Forsland. Wait, scores! He went top shelf as Lippmann went down and it's 4-1 to one Golden Eagles. A commanding three-goal lead now late in the hockey game. Wow, Forsland set up and across the line. The only Swedish-born player in the International League took that pass across the blue line and uh, he's getting the congratulatory pass from his teammates. He worked in all alone. He stopped and then just scooped it up high just underneath the crossfire for a 4-1 to one Salt Lake lead. He played 38 games in Calgary last year at 10 or 22 games for Salt Lake. Scores his 10th goal of this year. Thomas Forsland, a big play there. It's 4-1 to one now, and we're coming back for more hockey from the Omni after we take this timeout. Five minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the game, and the Golden Eagles lead by three. This is the IHL on Prime. Thomas Forslund's goal a moment ago, his 10th of the year, makes it a 4-1 to one score with Mike Barrick, Ken Double back at the Omni, and we're ready to play hockey. The face-off at center ice. And Gretzky trying to push the puck in, is held up. And now the Golden Eagles can certainly afford to play a game of keep away here with a three-goal lead late in the hockey game. Now the Knights try to feed a long pass. Player falls down. Here's Gretzky. Gretzky. For John Blue Air. Fired a too far past him. Now Johnny B tries a centering pass. Now high. Back to Jean Blue Air. Bouncing puck. And he ends up giving it to Lapuma out of his zone. 
tough break there as Gretzky, Fed Luan, couldn't catch the pass. Kevin Workman fell down at his blue line, allowing that two-on-one to develop. Oh, Gretzky gives up the puck, trying to be cute, but it's St. Pierre. Feeds it in. Keeps it alive along the near board. His centering pass pushed here to the near side, and Gretzky takes a big bump from Kevin Guy. Guy falls down. They're still trying to dig the puck loose. All jammed up along the boards. Now it's cleared to center. Luan fires a shot wide. And it's played by the Golden Eagles. Here comes Struth. This shot knocked down by Boston. The puck cleared by Jason Lafreniere. He takes a bump from Clark. And it pops over Stoltz stick, and it's free at center ice for Kevin Guy. He bangs it off the near board. Played back by Atlanta, and then played back by Guy. His long shot knocked down by Lippman. As we near the four-minute mark left in this hockey game. And the Knights beat it up the far side. Bergman around a check. Feeds Vincelette. His shot knocked down and played by Chernomine. He feeds it here to the near side. McCarthy takes the bump as he throws the puck into the zone. And they'll rule icing. That much time remaining in the hockey game and the Atlanta Knights having to climb the mountain now. It's not just a little hill, it's a mountain, Mike. A terrific game for the Golden Eagles here on enemy ice. Outshot 32-19 and Trepaloff has been brilliant once again. The penalties have been a factor. Nine power plays for the Knights. They've scored only one. And next week, uh, another great game, Cleveland and Cincinnati. And I was there last week. I was there this past the Friday night. What a building. The Cincinnati Gardens, it is loud in there. You know, I'll tell you what, that was the great old barn where Oscar Robertson scored all his points for the old Cincinnati Royals in the NBA. And the uh, hockey team has moved in there, moved from the East Coast League to the IHL. They packed that place with almost 10,000 a night. And now right in front, a shot for Chernomaz, and he almost got it home. But they love their hockey in Cincinnati, and it's a very entertaining brand of hockey in a, in a neat old building. The atmosphere is just great. Now the puck chopped into the corner. Lands plays it behind his own net with 3.20 left to go in the hockey game. His long pass to Capuano, and away from the pass, back down, you've got Buchanan all wrapped up with McCarthy and a little bit of a waltz me around Katie. Nobody's thrown a punch yet. And yeah, once again, uh, Buchanan at 6'2", 190. McCarthy's got this, a little bit of size and weight advantage there. Now starts to throw some punches, but Buchanan trying to fight back. And they hit the ice. And the linesmen jump in to separate them. It's funny, McCarthy had uh, 892 minutes in penalties in his three years of junior hockey in the Quebec League. And Buchanan had over 140 last year for the Saskatoon Blades of the Western Hockey League, a free agent signed by Tampa Bay this summer. And uh, not much uh, can of a scrap there, not a lot of punches uh, connecting. As the play went down the rink, those two just remained tied up on the glass, and they had the arms tied up on both of them. They have both gone to their respective locker rooms, I think, because this will be five-minute fighting penalties with just 3.16 remaining in the hockey game. They'll not see action again unless there's overtime. And there won't be overtime unless the Atlanta Knights can light it up in a hurry. And Mr. Trefiloff has made sure that that hasn't happened all night long. Has he been great? What exactly we were anticipating? Some fireworks in front of the Salt Lake net by Trefiloff, who is a, just a great goalie and fun to watch. Trefiloff uh, did not have an NHL team growing up in Kirovo, Russia. And was ecstatic to be drafted by the Calgary Flames. Thought he'd be drafted by the Hartford Whalers. He played a scoreless uh, tie there in a Super Series game, but uh, was drafted by the Flames. You know, he makes Tony Esposito's style seem orthodox. And Esposito was all over the ice in his great career with the Chicago Blackhawks. He is all over the place in goal. And uh, again, that glove is terrific and tremendous reflex. Many of the NHL scouts question if that style would be successful with the wall. Now here's Clark with the puck intercepted. 
It'll be interesting to see when he gets his opportunity in the big league, and it'll come, there's no question, at some point in time, if that style does work. Now the Golden Eagle play the puck into the far side. It's played there by Struth. As Workman cutting in front, try to beat him on a good play by Lands. Tied that pass up, and then Lands sends it all the way down. No icing here. Two minutes left in the hockey game. Four to one in favor of the Golden Eagles. They're going to escape Atlanta, it appears, with two points and a big win. And now we've got them going again. Away from the action on the near side, Stevenson got all over. I believe it's Gillingham who gets up, and yes, it is Todd Gillingham who scored a pair. And now Terry Clark gets involved also. And Salat has him all tied up. Stevenson really wanted a piece of Gillingham. You recall earlier in this game, it was Gillingham that just ran over David Littman on the play into the Atlanta zone. And here late in the game, uh, Gillingham is not too popular. And he still wants to get at the Atlanta player, Stevenson. That was the original pair of players that were involved. And Derek Martin orders the gate open, and Stevenson sent to the locker room. Now, he wants Gillingham off to his locker room. Unfortunately, some of the fans starting to throw debris on the ice, and that's something's always bothered me. Yell and scream and have a lot of fun, but don't interfere with the game by throwing stuff on the ice. Fans that have followed the IHL, and particularly in Phoenix, know all about it. It's Todd Gillingham was uh, the first player, it's going to go down to the history books, to score against Manon Realm in a regular season game uh, earlier in this game tonight. But the Golden Eagles are known for this, Ken, and I've been around it. I've seen Stu Grimson and Rick Hayward and players such as that Grimson now for the Chicago Blackhawks. <laughs> and uh, they've uh, had co Paul Baxter as the head coach, who was uh, one rough, tough co customer in his days in the National. Hockey League, and over the years, the Eagles have built up a reputation under the Calgary Flames organization as a team that wins some games, loses some games, but it's always entertaining uh, as far as the fisticuffs are concerned. So, Stevenson and Gillingham shake things up in the Omni here for a while as David Littman skates around and gets a little refreshment and a pause in the play, and we'll find out in a moment just what Derek Martin, the referee, has ruled regarding penalties. Can you see this quite a bit with a game at this point out of reach? Four to one, still in the lead. Uh, the home fans frustrated, I think. And, you know, it gives the, the fans that are still here something to cheer about. And that's what happened on that play to the corner. I think sometimes uh, fans who may not like the fighting that much, but I'll tell you what, the fans were excited that they left the goal and wanted to see more. As Bob Francis says, let's get this game over with and uh, forget all of this. At the same time, give the NHL and then the lower leagues uh, a lot of credit as they have adopted the rules changes so that there are instigator penalties and other penalties that help keep the silly nonsense and the silly fighting under control. Stevenson gets two for instigation, five minutes for fighting, and a game misconduct. As you see on the left of your screen, Kurt Bennett, he's an assistant coach with the Knights, and a former Atlanta Flame was honored during the second intermission. Evidently, the penalties, Gillingham and Stevenson, five each for fighting with Stevenson, that instigation penalty, and as a result, the fifth power play coming up for Salt Lake. And so the Knights, with just now a minute 45 left in the hockey game, will finish the game shorthanded. Although, uh, the way it's gone, the outcome, somewhat of a moot point at this point, the Golden Eagles are going to march, out, march uh, out of here. Big pump as uh, Turnamaz takes a hit from La Puma. With their 16th win of the year, and two big points on the road. Now the puck played along the near boards. And another big pump. Fans along the near boards, hoping for something more than just a check. Nicholas and Rivers get the sticks up. There's a shot on goal. Lapuma takes a run at Nicholas, and now Lapuma and Nicholas go at it. Nicholas has him down in a hurry. And the goaltender trying to step in, Littman. On Nicholas as he gets Lapuma down. 
the linesman counts on them and we'll have a couple of more players banished from this one that's round number two for Nikowak in this game is uh, being escorted by the linesman and having some gestures for the fans here as well it's uh, somewhat of a high five from Looks like McCarthy. Does it seem like there. an Ivy League type of guy to you? <laughs> <laughs> Probably has his master's degree or working toward that, huh? Alex Nikolok, uh, 6'1", 215 pounds, obviously, and Rick Lands for the Atlanta Knights, although that I don't was, believe was he was, yeah, was the Puma was the other in that. combatant in that one. And uh, escorted out of here on the far wing with uh, just over a minute left of the game 104 to be exact and Nikoluk is going to get the instigation I believe on this one well just about running out of room on the penalty side of the score sheet here with a lot of fights at the end of the hockey game he's still in the runway area is not going to the dressing room wants to see the end of this game uh, and it's just a matter of uh, closing things out now with uh, the four to one score he does get the instigation penalty and uh, you see Bob Francis and the Salt Lake bench and Francis is probably saying to himself come on let's get this thing over with and uh, catch that flight so now we'll finish the game four on four in front of the goaltenders and now just one minute left in the hockey game. Four to one, the Golden Eagles in front as Land feeds it ahead to Vincelet. Run into the boards by Stoke on a good bump right there. Just a good healthy check. The puck back across the line, deflected back to center ice with 35 seconds left in the hockey game. The Golden Eagles have played an outstanding game here. They weathered a first period storm in which they were decidedly outshot by Atlanta. It ended nothing to nothing. They took a two to nothing lead. And the Knights made a two to one in the third period. It took Salt Lake about 12 seconds to answer that goal with one of their own. And now we're gonna have the four to one victory with just 10 seconds left in the hockey game. Lands with the puck. Feeds it here to center ice. It's dumped back in, the horn sounds, that's it. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles split a two game series and come into Atlanta winning the second game. The final score four to one. Congratulations all the way around for their fine netminder. As you look at Todd Brost making his way to offer congratulations for Trefiloff, who was absolutely outstanding between the pipes for the Golden Eagles. Well, the, the final here four to one. And uh, Trafalov skates off 31 saves, and some of the fans, even in Atlanta, giving him uh, the high fives. And he was a sensational in goal tonight for Salt Lake. Is the 13th win of the season, and uh, lowering his goals again. Four to one, the final score is Trafalov skates off triumphant. And we'll be back to wrap things up from the Omni after this. This is the IHL on Prime. Back at the Omni, and the Golden Eagles have scored the 4-1 to one victory over the Atlanta Knights here, and finishing a tremendous road trip with a 4-1 and one record. Hello again, everybody, with Mike Barrick. This is Ken Double, and Mike, an outstanding hockey game tonight for the Golden Eagles on uh, all ends of the rink. Eagles outshot 32-19, truffle off with 31 saves in goal tonight for the Golden Eagles. They killed off eight Atlanta power plays, and that was a key in the game here. Trefiloff, uh, obviously the player of the game in this one, as uh, he came up big a number of times in this hockey game. And now we're joined by the Salt Lake Golden Eagle coach, Bob Francis. And Bob, you've got to be thrilled to be able to not only come out of this building with the victory tonight, but finish 4-1 and one in a long road trip. Yeah, that's true, Ken. It was a critical part of our schedule. Uh, we had a tough stretch here. We played eight games in 12 days, and the guys responded very well. We looked forward to coming on the road because we were at home for a period of time, and, and the guys responded. It was nice to finish it off on a positive note. Bob Francis, Mike Barak here, and uh, uh, the first goal of the hockey game scored by your team against Manon Rayom. Uh, uh, what did you think about that? 
Well, I was uh, still a little uh, concerned why the, the other one was called back. It'll be interesting to see it on tape. And uh, it was just a situation we're fortunate to get it that that close to, to getting the first one taken away. But it was an unfortunate situation for Monona. Todd Gillingham just came out of the penalty box. Uh, she's caught in a predicament where it was a tough decision, and it was just an unfortunate bounce for her, actually. And uh, it was a big goal for us, though, because they were coming at us pretty strong. I thought the guys responded well after the first period. We made some adjustments, and uh, they were they were more prepared coming into the game. And on, on Andre kept us uh, in a predicament that we were able to win the game. Bob, we come into the treffle office spectacular. There are some who think that maybe his style will not hold up in the NHL, that the shooters are too strong. What do you think about his NHL prospects? I don't think there's any question that Andre is going to play in the National Hockey League. He's not only going to play, but he's going to be very good. Uh, he's got his uh, exceptional reflexes, better than any goaltender I've ever seen. He's very quick, and he see, he tends to give and take. Uh, he seems awkward at times, but he knows what he's doing. He'll give you some room. He'll suck the shooter into get, uh, going for that spot, and with his great reflexes, he takes it away. And uh, He's an exceptional athlete. He's a fierce competitor. This guy loves to win, and he's won wherever he's going to be, wherever he's been, rather, and there's no uh, reason to believe he's not going to win at the National League level. Bob, I know you guys got a flight to catch and you want to get out of here, so we'll let him get back to the locker room. Thanks so much for visiting with us, and congratulations on the win. Thank you, Ken. It's been my pleasure. Bob Francis, the uh, head coach. I wonder if uh, Emil the Cat, his dad, has seen this guy play. Well, I'll tell you what, if he hasn't, uh, there'll be a lot of NHL scouts that uh, start coming out and watching this 23-year-old uh, who played very well. And I also wonder uh, what Amo thinks about his son's success as a head coach in uh, professional hockey. He would love to see his son follow in his footsteps to the National Hockey League. We're going to come back and have more from the Omni. No, we're not. Oh, here we go. Third period statistics right here. Salt Lake winning it 4-1. to one. And again, those incredible shots on goal numbers. Yeah, and the power play is a factor as well. Uh, nine power plays uh, for the Atlanta Knights in this game, and uh, the Golden Eagles killing off eight in the game this evening. And the Golden Eagles pulled away in uh, the third period with a couple of goals, and uh, that uh, made the final 4-1 to one here in Atlanta in favor of Salt Lake. And the scoring story, really, uh, Gillingham. Uh, somebody that you don't anticipate is going to score an awful lot of goals for you, and yet uh, he's a guy that got the job done. Yeah, he sure did. He scored the first goal against Manon Rayom. He also scored the second goal against Lippmann to give Salt Lake the 2-1 to one lead. And not only that, but he was throwing his body around all night long, getting into the hair of some of the Atlanta players. They didn't like it too much, but he played a physical game along the boards and also scored the pair of goals, so a big night for him. Tough on Atlanta in that they came out very strong. Outshot the Golden Eagles decidedly in that first period, but came up with goose eggs. And Trefilov now really becoming a thorn in their side. They have faced Trefilov three times, lost to him twice in Salt Lake, now have lost to him on the home ice, and in each of the three games has scored just one goal. So the Knights have really had their problems with the young, fantastic netminder from Salt Lake. Well, the Knights aren't the only team that have had their problems <laughs> with him. Milwaukee had 53 shots one night, he made 52 saves in a 2-1 to one victory over the Admirals at the Delta Center, and he has lowered his goals against under 2.6, the only goaltender in the league with a better goal is against Rick Knickel, the San Diego goal, so he's second in the league. And, of course, Knickel and his bunch have only lost <laughs> once in regulation time, so you can imagine the success that they've been having. And uh, this is a big two points for you people on the road again as you try to make some hay in the Western Conference. There's no question that San Diego, far and away the best team in the IHL, is probably going to get that top seed come playoff time. But the Golden Eagles now playing very strong hockey here as we approach kind of the, the middle third of the IHL season. And this bodes well for them long range. Yeah, it sure does. And in fact, uh, the way the playoffs are set in the International League down the line, they'll all fight for positioning in the individual conferences. So Salt Lake will battle with Milwaukee and Peoria and Kansas City as well. So every point at this time of the season, very important because of the overall playoff picture at the end of the season. Mike Barrick, thanks so much for being here with us. We hope that you folks have enjoyed our initial telecast on Prime, and we will be with you throughout the season to keep you updated on the activity in the IHL. We've enjoyed bringing you this one from the Omni. The final score, Salt Lake 4, Atlanta 1. The game has been brought to you by RCA. Changing entertainment again. By Power Play Promotions, the official supplier of the IHL. And by American Semwood, the wood fiber cement people. We hope that you'll be with us next week when we again bring you IHL Hockey on Prime. It will be 
Cleveland at Cincinnati, December the 19th. We'll look forward to seeing you then. From the Omni, this is Ken Double saying so long, everybody. This has been a presentation of Prime Network.